Today's going to be a real interesting episode because on one hand, we're going to do a lot of hating. On the other hand, we're going to throw a lot of praise. 50-50, today we're doing the most underrated player in the league from every team and the most overrated player in the league from every team. Let's, be a fun one. Let's, let's be real. It's probably going to be like 64 <laughs> hating. We're, we're getting some hate <laughs> off. That's what we do. That's, our, that's kind that's of nice. our bad. I'm no. here to praise and tell you about all these young players that I think y'all should pay attention Boo. to. Boo. <laughs> there might be a couple people that I'm like, listen, it's not that nice, but more praise than hate today for me. I don't know about y'all. I'll, I'll compensate for you. I'll, I'll pick it up. <laughs> this is all you do, Donovan. Aside from, you know what I'm saying, the greatest of all time video, this will probably be your second most favorite podcast ever. Hating <laughs> is your yep. middle name, bro. Me, I don't say I, I don't thrive in it too much. I don't have a lot of agendas to push other than like pushing for mid role players like Davion. Mitchell. Oh, see, I got agendas we'll to continue. push. It's just like <laughs> respect these players I like a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also, there's also uh, y'all are going to see random teams throughout the list where I'm like, bro, who do you want me to call underrated or overrated on this team? They're all ass. <laughs> what am I supposed to do here? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to pick somebody. I don't want to hear any cop outs. You, you better throw a name out there. Bro's yeah. trying to force me to hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor. Drop a like and subscribe. Try to get this episode of 3,000 likes for us. If you're on audio platforms, rate us five stars. Leave a review. The whole nine yards. Follow us on socials. You should see them on the screen. At the Deep 3 Podcast on Twitter, Instagram. All that. Let's join our right Discord as well. Join the yeah, Discord. Join the Discord. True. true. I think so... After this overrated and underrated list, we're going to react to some of the top 20 lists from the fans. And we got those lists from the Discord. So we're going to be doing a lot more of that where we, you know, react to your guys' questions. Like I said, re- rate your top 20 list, stuff like that. And it's always going to be in the Discord. So be sure to join in the top of the description. Join the community. Get talking. Sometimes we'd be in there. Yeah, man. Let's do it. Let's get into these lists. And right, we're going to start with the Pacific Division. Get these Cali teams out of the way first. So you see my teams right now on the screen. I'm going to say the underrated team first and then overrated for the audio listeners. So for the Lakers, I have Jared Vanderbilt and D'Angelo Russell. The Clippers, KJ Martin and Bones Highland. The Kings, Kevin Herter and DeMontis Sabonis. Interested to see what y'all say about that one. The Warriors, I have Draymond and Clay. And then finally, the Suns, I have Jordan Goodwin and Bull Bull. Jordan what do y'all Bull. think? Jordan Goodwin is the deepest cut of all cuts yep. and i like yeah, it the deepest cut. it's, <laughs> the deepest it's cut a huge for sure. it's a huge w nothing really that's much needs to be said about you know bowl bowl i think you know universally everyone's like yeah this dude isn't good was an interesting player coming out of college <laughs> looked super nice coming out of high school was like a top five prospect or top three prospect in the world you know but he just looks nice that's all it is you know on yeah. the court it's a different looks story like a 2k player yeah exactly the herder exactly. pick is really interesting. I know you you've we've talked a little bit with like when we were doing the ranking stuff about like mm-hmm. your feelings on Sabonis. So like it makes sense to me why you would put him there. But I think the herder aspect is really, really interesting because like spoiler alert, he's on my list as well as cool. as as underrated. So I like that pick. I don't think that Jared Vanderbilt can be classified as underrated. I feel like he's yeah. very perfectly rated right now. I agree. That yeah. was it. Was one so a lot of these I put a name because I didn't do any cop outs. I didn't put like uh, two names or nobody or anything like that. So sometimes I had to pick a player, even though I don't really <laughs> think anybody in the Lakers is underrated. Yeah, yeah. Really, I could have put Anthony Davis because that's you know I fucking love Anthony Davis, but I'm like yeah. he's not. He's a top ten player. It is who he is. Yeah. So I thought Vanderbilt was the closest thing because like Rui's not underrated. Maybe he's a little bit overrated mm-hmm. even. LeBron is not overrated. Yeah. Austin Reeves gets plenty of love. Like I didn't really know where to go, so I was like. I bet there's a lot of fans out there who don't know who he is. So I threw him on there. Yeah. Okay. It's very hard to do it for a lot of these super popular teams like the Lakers and also the Warriors. But overall, mm-hmm. holistically, I can agree. You know, he does a lot of stuff that is not highlight worthy, like what Austin Reed does or AD does or obviously, yeah, yeah. you know, anybody of that caliber or anybody who has that same type of play style. But more so, the only gripe that I have on this list is like i don't want to say for real right i ain't gonna go to war with it but you know i I don't think kevin herter is underrated you know i think he's perfectly rated you have (laughs) no no it's not him as a walks fan it is not it is not bro it is not i love kevin herter if i could i right now on this atlanta hawks team i would probably have him over Dejounte murray just fit wise and also just flow of offense wise wow 
If you think wow. you'd rather have DeJounte Murray, I mean, Kevin Hurd than DeJounte Murray, so he's you overrated. cannot tell me Kevin Hurd is not <laughs> underrated. Listen, listen, listen. That's just style of basketball play. Yeah. That's all I'm talking about right now. But back to it. yeah, back to Kevin Herter. Where was he at in the playoffs? Why was okay, Malik okay, Monk okay. going crazy okay. in the playoffs? This is this and this is why this is why I think that he's underrated. And his his underrated goes hand in hand with who I think is overrated for the Kings. And so if we can, let's let's just go to, to my five and then we Perfect. can like kind of center in on, on the Kings right now. So I'm going underrated and overrated as well. So for the Lakers. Gabe Vincent is underrated and Rui is overrated. Clippers, fair. Clippers is KJ Martin, Terrence Mann. Very fair. For the Kings. <laughs> I like that. For the Kings, uh Kevon Herter, Malik Monk. For, okay. for the Warriors, Kevon Looney, Clay Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, on, I'm, we're pushing agendas here. We're you pushing love agendas. Come on, Looney. <laughs> we're pushing agendas. And then for the Suns, and then yeah, and then for the Suns, we got uh, we got Bates and then Bobo as well. I couldn't decide between Bradley Beal, Bobo, but like I guess I'll go with Bobo. Just uh, really, yeah. I would, Why do you, okay, man. You, you you go ahead and cook about Herder first because I have some thoughts about one okay. of those picks. So I think that he goes hand in hand with Malik Monk being overrated because Monk had. A like solid playoff series, but even in that series, he was fairly like he wasn't cra- he, he that's what I'm saying. He was very streaky. He wasn't crazy efficient, and everybody sees just like the volume scoring that he had, and was like, oh, like he's he's so much better. Plus, he had the year with the Lakers where his profile really rose, and so everyone's yeah. like, he's he's one of the best, you know, six men in the league. He's so streaky. He's this. He's that. And the shooting that the shooting and the moving that Kevon Herter provides for the Kings unlocks a lot of what they do and he goes hand in hand with Sabonis and they're able to play off each other and so they have this really like wide open warriors light type of offense that they're running mm-hmm. surprise surprise because Mike Brown's coaching him but yeah that that style of basketball only works when you have a really good shooter who can kind of create a lot of gravity everywhere create plays off the ball with his screens and stuff like that and Herder does that he unlocks a lot of stuff for that so that's why so I think you, like that. that's why I think he's underrated so you think strictly based off of the archetype, this is what I said earlier, too. Like, you know, for his archetype and his play style, I would rather have someone like him on my team than someone like Dejon Murray, whatever, cool. But I'm looking at that, at his archetype, and actually what he does on the court. And I'm like, when – I don't want to say when the moments are brightest, he sides away or whatever. But when the Kings needed him the most and when we really needed those deep bomb three, threes and a little bit more ball handling aggressiveness that he showed – randomly throughout the season for the Kings. And it was a big part of them changing everything around along with Sabonis, of course, and De'Aaron Fox and all them boys. I, I don't want to say like, I'm not, I don't, I don't think he's underrated in my mind, but I guess you can say for the general consensus of NBA fans, that's perfectly fine. I don't think Sabonis yeah, yeah. is, yeah. To, uh, go on ahead. the flip side, I don't think Sabonis is overrated necessarily. I don't think anyone's over saying over here saying cornerstone of the franchise. De- yes, they are. De- 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 that's, that's, a of, that's a lot of people. Listen, I put him in top five in my standards list, and I and I understood like at the time that yeah. that was just an overreaction. That was just like a respect play. But what he did last season and the Kings' entire season, there's a lot of people on that roster that's going to get love, and if they don't match what they did last season this year. Oh, it's gonna be a lot of hating, and it's gonna be a Sabonis, it's gonna be a lot of like, oh, y'all were flukes. People talk about Sabonis after this past year because he had a great regular season, right? He was mm-hmm. averaging like seven assists a game, to twenty-two points per game, pretty efficient. Like he was a great offensive player for the regular season. People talk about him now like he's one of the best offensive players in the league. They call him like Baby Jokic. Say he offers you the That's same so type lazy. of things, all this bullshit. He yeah. was All NBA. He deserved it because you know it's a regular season award. He performed at that level. But no matter what, I feel like I've said this on four episodes now. You're never going to be a successful playoff team with DeMontis Sabonis as your center. His style of play, offensively and defensively, is not conducive to playoff basketball. Granted, he had a hand injury, but you saw with the Warriors, any smart team that can make basic adjustments and strategy will shut you down. His off, his passing in terms of his high post stuff is going to be shut down in the playoffs if we have a smart team like the Warriors. His offensive skills, his lack of perimeter shooting, going to be exposed. Defense, obviously not going to be a strength of his to make up for that. I just... Don't think his regular season success is enough to put him in the caliber player that people like to do. Like I got flamed in a TikTok for saying that Bam is better than than Sabonis. Mm. I would take Bam I, a thousand times. Okay, I see what you mean. I remember back in the day before you know I'm saying Miami went on their playoff run. 
there was actual conversations about Bam versus Sabonis. That was actual TikTok yeah. f- frameworks and and everybody says Sabonis Twitter layouts and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> and that's just not so. I see what you mean. I was the bozo for picking one of the best defensive players in the world over fucking mature Sangoon. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. All that's it tells funny. me is, hey, you you're, you need to get a little bit trigger happy with that block button on TikTok and also change your <laughs> algorithm. <laughs> change your algorithm. So we can roll into my my last group. Um, I think we have a lot of things in common. First off, like, you know, we can just go ahead and I think probably the craziest thing or the most outrageous thing we may be having KD there instead of uh, Bull Bull. All right, well, like, listen to me but yeah, for the audio listeners, for the Lakers, underrated, Torian Prince, overrated, Gabe Vincent, Clippers, underrated, West Russell Westbrook, overrated, we all agreed pretty much. Not me. Bones Highland, yeah, not I mean, you. I had but, somebody else. Yeah, not you. Sacramento Kings, underrated, D- Davion Mitchell, overrated. I don't really have a player in mind. Say Sabonis. I don't really have. I can't really <laughs> say that on my chest. I'm not Pussy. a glorified hater. <laughs> Golden State Warriors, underrated. Andrew Wiggins. I don't think really anybody can come out my neck for that. He does a lot of valuable things. Overrated. Fair. This is a sweep. Clay Thompson. <laughs> Poor Phoenix Clay. I don't even hate Clay. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. It's just about like, bro, like, what have you done? You know what I'm saying? Especially in the playoffs. Phoenix Suns, underrated. Devin Booker. For specifically, when I talk about that, I just talk about him and being a primar- primary ball handler. I can agree with the Jordan Goodwin thing. I can agree with the uh, with your pick also, Donovan. Overrated, I have Kevin Durant. And that's very contradictory to what I did a couple of weeks ago or a couple of days ago with one of the segments that we did. So, any gripes? I mean, uh, let's see. K- I mean K- KD being overrated is, is weird. I see what you're cooking, though. I mean... Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but weird. it depends. Do you think people still view him as like a top three player? I think most people realize that ship has sailed. Yeah. Um, people, AK, I, I never viewed him as a top three player, but I had since never? we did that. <laughs> not never. I'm talking about like, you know, over the last year for real. Yeah, I never viewed him as a top yeah, three yeah. player. Um, but I really had internal battles with myself between Tatum and KD and viewing what they've done over the last few years and just what Jason Tanner brings to the table versus KD and all sorts of stuff and just seeing what he's actually done on the court when the lights have been brightest and when teammates need him the most. I witnessed KD go ahead and have hella inconsistent games, shoot fucking yep. four days, 10 for 31, 8 for 24 type shit, four, five turnovers <laughs> against the Denver Nuggets in a series that a lot of people had you know, the Phoenix Suns and Kevin Durant especially just demolishing them. Not demolishing them, but winning pretty handedly you know yeah so okay. that is what made me sway that way i'm not gonna like puff out with my chest katie most overrated player in the league i have one of those i have maybe two or three <laughs> of those but kevin durant is not on my list whatsoever okay um, yeah i think a lot of people look past kevin durant's failures in the last couple of years like that series against the buck i mean series against the celtics when he was still in the nets the year before last was exactly an all-time exposing job like that was equally as embarrassing as LeBron's 2011 finals. We just don't give a shit because it wasn't in the finals and it's KD and we're just like, best score of all time. It doesn't matter. They pick and choose. But like, yeah. Yeah. Like in his older age, he's had a lot more moments like that where he can be taken out of games because he can't get to the rim. And if you take away that mid range shot, which, you know, take away is being generous because he's always going to shoot over people. But if you make that more difficult on him, he's yeah. more schemable at this point of his career. So I get that. I don't think I don't think the general consensus has realized that. Some propaganda that I want to push that no one cares about, but I do, mother effer. <laughs> Davion Mitchell, trade that man away, set him free. He, off night, that's hey, what that's what they call him. Bro, he's gotten overused less nickname. minutes. It's overused as hell, but it was one of the coldest <laughs> until it got overused, of course. But um this man improved in every statistical category, became a better shooter. Uh, improved his field goal percentage, three points percentage. I'm not sure where his uh point per game point per game was necessarily, but I just know overall he was a more efficient scorer across the board. But the minutes for him dropped, of course, naturally when you have someone like Kevin Hurd on your team, Malik Monk. 
Um, yeah, the, the, opp- the opportunity is just not going to be there. And overall, it hasn't been there for a team like the Sacramento Kings, who drafted three point guards in a span of like three, four or four or five years, just things that normal teams don't do, but they did. And so I feel like Davion Mitchell needs to be freed onto another team where he can actually be a part of a, a part of a future. He has that type of potential. Yeah. And right now he's just hidden, stashed away, and no one really cares about him. So I think he's one of the most one of the more underrated players in the NBA, for sure. Yeah. I, tw- I tweeted it today. I, I how I know no one cares. My tweet only got eight likes. That hurt my heart. And this is why all <laughs> no y'all motion. need to follow us no on Twitter. <laughs> no motion no for motion. real. <laughs> get your my up. dad texted me today. He screenshot that. He's like, get a job. <laughs> <laughs> He's listening. This Twitter ad revenue isn't paying the bills. Step it X. up. Y'all need to step up. Start tweeting. Uh, who's your favorite player growing up? I was engaging. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's hilarious. Yeah. But um, So I see nobody has D'Angelo Russell in their underrated players. No, uh, is that because no. you guys feel like everybody knows he sucks or what? Bro. Yeah. Yeah, the the jokes are just going to fly all season long. Anytime that he has a bad game, they're going to post a meme saying like, D'Angelo Russell is is getting shots up after this. (laughs) He's gotten to the point where he's his inconsistencies have caught up to him. And it's not something where it's like, oh, it's just one bad playoff run. It's even two bad playoff runs. He's just not good in the playoffs. He has he has a lot of uh, limitations. He's very streaky. And I think especially with the contract, everybody kind of expects the Lakers to move on from him and they're like he has a very tradable contract so it's not anything to be underrated about you yeah, know he's, he's knows he's properly rated yeah we know what D'Angelo Russell is <laughs> we know this guy is not good <laughs> yeah facts yeah that's yeah. funny okay fair enough I see you have Russell Westbrook there for the Clippers Mo cool yeah he had a I, I, I think people love him so like obviously he got shit on for his Lakers years deservedly like he was really bad but I think it was very quick to flip around. And everybody'd be like, "See, I told you he's still good." As soon yeah. as he shows some life, so y'all, Clippers, were, so. y'all were not believing in him. Y'all did not believe in him <laughs> two months ago, two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like he's probably rated again. People were like, "See, I told you he's good." Yeah, which is good for him. He played really well. One yeah. thing that I want to say yeah. is that I absolutely love the Martin Love for the San- for the Los Angeles Clippers, bro. He is a fantastic player insane nice. rebounder yeah, awesome. athletic as hell he's just like and he's a perfect glue guy so yeah I love this exactly. how, do, how do y'all feel about me putting terrence man there because both of you guys went bones highland oh i agree especially like he's he's overrated simply for the fact that the clippers are treating him like he's tyrese maxi in these thank, trade rumors thank you that that's yeah. literally the only reason why i put him there because yeah. it's bothered me because i'm like if if there's only things standing in between you pairing paul george and Kawhi leonard with james harden is Terrence man? Idiots, bro. bro. Please bro, get, get over reported. yourselves. You know how they're reporting this? They're saying like the Clippers are hesitant to give up their uh, blue chip young assets and draft picks. Young the assets? Chip, he's, he's pushing 30. <laughs> he's pushing 30. I thought he was 24, 25. And they fooled the world. The man is older than us by like five years. God. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's just gotten out of hand. Trade him. <laughs> Get James Harden in the building, and then maybe you have an actual chance at getting a chip this year. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. All right, man. Let's move on to our next division. We have six divisions to fly through. We can't spend too much time on any of these. <laughs> True. Let's go to the next one. Next up, what's the division called again? Uh, the Northwest. We have the Northwest division. We have, for the Nuggets, you know, again, saying underrated first, then overrated, so I don't got to say those words a thousand times. For the Nuggets, I have Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. The Timberwolves, I have Jaden McDaniels. Easiest pick on this whole list. And Carl Anthony Towns. Jazz, Walker Kessler, another easy pick. And John Collins. Trailblazers, Damian Lillard, and Anthony Simons. And then the Thunder, Josh Giddy, and Lou Dort. Nice. How y'all feeling? Oh, uh, man. I like... First and foremost, the Dame pick, I just, just nobody else underrated on that team. I, I feel I that. Like, sure. I feel that. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I, I, listen, I, I know what the game wow. is. I know what it is. Wow. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Wow. He's okay. underrated with their team's ass. So I'm like, what am I going to say? Shade and sharp? Like, whatever. I honestly think <laughs> that this might be the best combination of underrated and overrated. I like your list more than my list, if we're being wow. real. Yeah. So I think I think you did a great job. I think all of these make sense. Yeah, I think yeah. Denver Nuggets on the money. I think I had the same lineup. Gordon is just overall a peak. He's peak glue. 
peak glue guy in the NBA, does all the dirty work for you. He can, of course, expand his offensive game when needed because he got that reputation repetition when he was with the Orlando, Mag- Orlando Magic in the trenches. Love it. Um, Michael Porter <laughs> Jr., he's just a sharpshooter, bro, who had like a yeah. lot of hype coming and- out of high school and college. So it's like... I don't even you know. think he's that overrated either. It's just like it's a really good team with not a lot of guys. And like he fits the building the most just because like he has a tantalizing skill set that probably some people out there would probably say he's better than Aaron Gordon or like he's better than KCP. But like I'd rather have both those guys, honestly. He's but just I don't think down. he's that overrated. He's just knocked out. Yeah. He's great. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he's that overrated. So it's no no hate to him. Like also Cat at this point, I don't think he's that overrated. But you got to pick somebody. I mean, yeah. he's overrated. He's overrated from Cat. Like I think, I think if anybody's yeah. overrating Cat, it's him. It's him and himself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, that's understandable. Lou Dort that's was another easy ass pick. It's so funny because like, <laughs> even like me early in this offseason was like the, his reputation from like four playoffs ago when he was like hitting all the shots like stuck yeah. in my head forever. But his offensive numbers are so hilariously bad. His he has a forty six percent effective field goal percentage. He shoots 35% on spot-up plays, which includes threes and twos attacking closeouts. That's 32nd percentile in the NBA. He's mm. in the bottom third of players as a spot-up player, which there's a lot of fucking bad players out there. Yeah. I you look think- at his like, uh, cleaning the glass stats, and they show like percentiles for each area of the court. Mm-hmm. The lower the percentile, it's blue. The higher percentile is red for like hot and cold. Mm-hmm. Straight blue. Shit is frozen. <laughs> He's bad at everything. <laughs> Give this man a blanket. God, are you serious? <laughs> Cold as shit. <laughs> but it's funny because you look at Walker Kessler on the other hand. He's my underrated player for the Jazz. Straight red. That man is yeah. underrated at everything. He I was knows. looking at his his numbers like will fucking blow your mind, especially like defensively. Mm-hmm. Let me look at this. He is um he has a four point eight percent block percentage, 99th percentile, second highest in the NBA for a big man. He blocks as a rookie. Fu- Wow. He blocks 5% of the opposing team shots. So they shoot 100 times. He blocks five of them, which is seems like not a lot, but <laughs> per game, like it's, I'm, that's I'm, a I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. That was a very anticlimactic stat. I know, I know, I know. He's out of 100. Bad way to phrase it. Uh. <laughs> no, honestly, I thought, the, I thought I was going to say bigger number. Then I did the math in my head. I was like, oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but 99th uh. percentile, he... Dude, he gets an offensive rebound on 13.7% of his own team's missed shots. Nah, that's that's crazy. Over one out of every 10 misses, he's grabbing that bitch and you have another chance. Yeah, That's, that's absurd. 93rd percentile. As a rookie, he, the man's incredible. He's insane, nah, he's bro. Him. He's him. Listen, he that's that's one of the reasons why he's already on this World Cup team. Is that like yeah. he's, he's just already fantastic. And like obviously you have to bring some some young talent into the game and everybody, at least Team USA and, and their the whole staff, they already see how talented he is. So I'm I'm with it. I'm, Let's go. I'm with it. I like it. The only gripe that I have is Anthony Simons being overrated. Can you explain that a little bit for me? Because I have that completely flipped. Not a little bit overrated, but just Anthony, Anthony Simons. I don't view him as yeah. uh, overrated Again, at all. it's another thing with that team. I don't really think it's overrated. I had to pick okay. somebody. It was with him <laughs> okay. or Jeremy Grant. Whatever. And I was like, people probably have a higher perception of Simons. Listen, if I'm being pessimistic, I think people are quick to say Simons is on a certain trajectory because of style of play. And he hasn't had the touches yet to, to like see if, the, if see if this hypothesis is correct. But I have okay. a feeling he'll be the level of ball handler if he got to be like the guy on a team that's like makes you a decent, not great team because he just like isn't great enough at any of the core things like you know being the off the dribble playmaker, passer, off the dribble shooter. And his negatives, like on defense, finishing at the rim or whatever, aren't gonna are gonna be, you know, substantial enough that the overall impact isn't gonna quite be there enough for him to be the lead ball handler on a team. Okay. But again, he hasn't had the chance yet. Maybe it'll prove me wrong. I'm just saying, if I gotta pick someone from this team who's overrated, I'll pick him just because you know you see conversations of like best young guards in the league, and it's like start one, bench one, cut one, or whatever. And he's often in those. And I think some of the people that compare him to are just better. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, let's let's get into into my next five because I I have Simon's on my list as well, but it's kind of flipped. But for the Nuggets, I have KCP is underrated, Jamal Murray is overrated, I have um, Nas Reed as underrated for the Timberwolves. Love it. And you can pick either big for the for the team. <laughs> you can pick Cat, you can big. pick Gobert, <laughs> and I'll be okay. For underrated for the Jazz, Danny Ainge. 
Wow. Underrated, <laughs> underrated at this point in his career. Uh, overrated to have uh, THT. Okay. Underrated for the uh, for the Blazers, Simons, and then overrated is Grant. And then for the Thunder, Isaiah Joe is very Oof. underrated. I'm a huge no love for him. I'm I love a that. huge Isaiah Joe fan. And then also for overrated, like you guys, I got Lou Dort. Oh, yeah, Isaiah bro. Joe can shoot. That's Isaiah a real Joe. Shooter. Sniper. I'm a yeah. huge Isaiah Joe fan. The Sunday yeah. Sixers underutilized him for years. Yeah, bro. Yeah. It was so, all the- how do we feel? Bro, I like your list. I like your list. You were cooking with the Isaiah Joe thing. Um, I think he's one of the, I don't want to say next prolific shooters in the NBA or anything like that. Not going to put those standards on him. But he's <laughs> going to be one of the next best like potential journeymen maybe overpay one day who knows when it comes to just what teams expect out of him or whatever what a but, destiny yeah well, i mean it's great bro i love it he has I'm one nasty. bag i him. love it he has one bag to get he better go get it sign me up 16 m's a year you got it hey man uh, danny ainge love the pick he's great THG, I feel like nobody rates him anymore, so I'm like, I guess that's fine. I, I had to I had to pick some. I really don't think that anybody on the Jazz yeah. is, is overrated. And yeah. so that was just one of those ones where I had to I had to pick someone. Um I think for for the Nuggets though, and I'll I'll you know I'll speak Oh I see Jamal Murray, I didn't even notice that yeah, at first. Yeah, Whoa. I put Jamal Murray as overrated. The only reason that. why is because as soon as the Nuggets won the title, and I feel like this entire offseason, we are already anointing Jamal Murray as like an all-star and he's gonna he's gonna get a boost and like, hey, maybe Jamal Murray should be, you know, all NBA. Like once the once like if the Nuggets have a very successful regular season and they're on pace to win what, 59, maybe even 60 games, it's like, is Jamal Murray one of the five best guards in the West? Is he one of the three best guards in the West? Like, what are we doing here? And I just I already see that talk coming. And so I'm getting out ahead of the overrating, and I'm going to say getting out ahead on that. Exactly, I'm going to say that you guys are already doing too much with Jamal Murray. So let's <laughs> let's bring it back. Wow. And so that that's why I have him there. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's getting his due, but that's a very fine line. It could easily become overrated. Like there's some like, the week of the championship, there was definitely some takes out there. Was like, listen, him or Trey Young? I don't know. Yeah, relax. Bro, them relax. takes, <laughs> yeah, them takes existed since way back in the day when the bubble was a thing, bro. A lot of people were. Yeah, that was a solidified thing right there, bro. Well, I mean, listen, so, bu- listen, Bubble Murray kind of he earned those comparisons. Bro, though. playoff yeah, Murray crazy. in general, he I think yeah. with what he does being quite literally probably I think statistically the greatest playoff riser that we've ever seen step on the uh, court. So, yep. It's ridiculous. A lot of <laughs> people go. go ahead. I mean, <laughs> a lot of people go. <laughs> here, we, here we go. This is how it starts. This is how it starts. I understand. We're going to get, gonna I get five years down the road, and it's like, y'all don't understand. Jamal Murray, it's just he's just different. You just have to be there. It's like, yeah. okay, okay. Hey, maybe it's yeah. true. Maybe they ran off another title or two. Maybe it's just facts. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, like, I, don't know. I, don't know. I understand. It I don't want to like go ahead and discredit him for the person he's playing next to. It's It makes his life so much easier. But yeah. with that being said, his job is still fucking hard, and you can't go ahead and discredit him or discount him because and rate him lower than the next guy because the next guy just has more attention around him and whatnot. Like, that's not to Jamal yeah. Murray's fault. He's doing exactly what he's supposed to do, and he's excelling, thriving, being the best that anyone can be at their role, you know? So I can't really yeah. put him in overrated. Now, if you, like you said, yeah. if you go ahead and put him in conversations with, like, you know, I would say, like, a John Morant or a Trey Young or, you know, guys like that, I'm like, okay, we probably need to relax a little bit. He's like that, yeah. but... There's things. Well, listen, he deserves it. He he deserves at least an off season of overrating. Okay, okay. Like you could you could propel somebody when they do something that amazing. He, he gets six months of that. If he doesn't do it next year, okay. he comes on the regular okay, season, averaging fair. nineteen. Then we'll have to talk. That's fair. Mm. Okay. For now, it's just rating. It's just rating what he just did. It's not over or under yet. All TBD. Right. <laughs> let's go ahead let's and see, let's put see, my list up. All right. So for the Denver Nuggets, just like Isaac. A G M P J, I think that's goes without saying. Aaron Gordon, I think he the greatest school guy in yep. the league, probably M P J. He's cool. <laughs> Jaden McDaniels, cat, like you said, Donovan, go ahead and pick it, pick a big Utah Jazz. I have John Collins. I'm feeling a little bit optimistic about him. Hopefully, I'm thinking, I'm assuming that his finger will swell down a little bit, and eventually, some team might get swindled into throwing this man a bag. 
All right. Under overrated Jordan Clarkson. I, I see what he does. It's good. It's great. But I don't think, you know, like <laughs> I don't think any team is fiending for him necessarily like that. They understand his role. Anthony Simons. That's something I could touch on later. Underrated. And uh and Shade and Sharp. I have a little bit overrated. Then for OKC, I got Josh Giddy and Trey Mann. All right. So okay. off off bat, yeah. do you guys have anything to say? I wanted to go Shade and Sharp overrated too. I was just like, let me not say this about a rookie. Let me give him time. But people definitely, maybe I've also probably said something like this in the past too, have definitely propelled him to be compared to some of the rookies in the class that did more in the rookie year just because like he's exciting and like we hope that he can become this player with his raw tools. But yeah, really that's about it. He's not a great shooter yet, not a great finish yet. Jumps were high, obviously not a good defender as a rookie. Yeah. And we definitely propel him into like, oh, listen, you might pick him top five in the redraft and shit yeah. like that. It's a, it's a bit excessive, so I get it. But I was just like, I'm not going to say a rookie with promises overrated yet. Let me give him some more time. Yeah, but I get exactly. It. it has nothing to do with him and what he's actually done on the court. You're a fucking rookie. I don't expect you to, to do too much. Everybody just licking licking his balls right now because they didn't see this man play in college. The last time we saw him play was in AAU in high school. Now y'all want to go ahead and act like Anthony Simons don't exist. Y'all want to go ahead. Oh, once you go ahead and trade away, Damian Lillard, uh, we, we can have a backcourt of school and sharp. What are you talking about? We have someone <laughs> who's who has a direct path of being a borderline fringe potential all star in Anthony Simons, who's a, that's sni- a, who's lot a sniper of from hell. <laughs> that's See a, that a, what you so just it's like, said. Why are you? Hold on, hold on. What you just said is why I put Simons in overrated potential why? to be a borderline some 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 maybe potentially if the rain it's is there. not too bad that week all star. It's only there because he lot. shoots off the dribble a lot, and people think that's a fun skill set. They're like, listen, a lot of other all-stars can do that. I don't think he's done anything at a high enough level yet to think he's going to make an all-star leap. It's always possible. He's young. But that type I, of stuff is like, I don't. what has he done so great that you think he's on the path to be an all-star? That's not the question that I am going to answer. The question that I'm going to answer is, <laughs> what hasn't he no. done? Straight the question that I have to answer is, what hasn't he done for you to go ahead and put him on the trading block for any type of assets and not build a future between I mean, Scoot okay, and also, okay, you know? If, that's you are building, if you're building your team around Simons. That's a crazy question. If you're building your team around Simons, <laughs> you do recognize that your team is, is in a very bad position. Like I, he wouldn't be one of like same right, with Sharp right now. No, I I agree. I listen. I didn't say anything Maybe about Sharp. I, 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 I didn't say that. No That's them. Yeah. That's not me. I'm saying that for Simons. <laughs> I'm saying that for Simons. There's 15, 20, maybe even 30 guys that I would rather build my team around. For sure. Before I get to him, and so I, I have listen. I have him as underrated as well, but that's more just because of the way that he's been discussed in these trade talks, and yeah. people kind of talk about him like is like a like a kind of like a throwing piece and it's like hey well the the blazers just need to get rid of him because they have scoot and because they have sharp and i agree they are they are forgetting about the things that simons can do but when you say borderline fringe potential all-star that's (laughs) that's that's what he can that's that's what i'm saying that's what he can be literally are reaching with those three adjectives to try to put to all-star you see what i'm saying when i say that (laughs) when i say that of course, I threw in the word potential. No shit, he's not that right now. Come on now, let's be real. But we see a real world and where he can become things of like that. We see a real world where he can be in the same tier as a, a la fucking Zach Levine. You know, knowing you want to build your team around, knowing you're going to go you ahead. Okay, world? listen, listen. Yeah, Why? definitely. Look, look, I'm not, I'm not going to fight you over, over Anthony Simons. Like, with it, just, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. not, I'm just not going to do it. He's just not on that yeah. level. We don't have time so for this like, argument okay, today. Fine. We don't have time for that, but I, I haven't seen anything. It doesn't move me that much to the oh. point where I say he's going to be a top five shooting guard in the league yeah. based on what I've seen him do on the shitty Blazers team. It's possible. I just, I'm not one to say I think that's going to happen first. I won't be shocked if it does, but I don't think it's like an inevitable. Uh, we either. can move on. All I'm saying is that he should be one of the main sticking pieces for the I, for the Portland okay. Trailblazers. That's it. Instead of Shady Star. All right. Let's hit the next division. Let's keep moving. <laughs> Let's go. We, 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 we got to speed through some of these. We don't want this to be another four-hour pod. <laughs> next up, we have the... Oh, we got the East right here. The Southeast Division? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. I don't know shit about these division names. Same. Right. It's bag. 
<laughs> Again, underrated and overrated. I have for the Hawks, Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. You're part of the problem. The we'll magic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know going. what that means. We'll keep get going, to keep it. Going. The magic. I have Franz Wagner. And oh, I wrote nobody. Oh, I didn't put anybody in my sent to come out. Wow. Cop Damn, out. I, I bitched out. Fuck. Okay, let me wow. think. I'm gonna put. Let's put Cole Anthony there. I guess. Uh, at the Heat, we'll like put that. Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero. The Hornets will say. Oh, this Wait. is marked wrong. He wrote Tyler yeah. Hero on there. Yeah, I was <laughs> the like, Hornets, I have. <laughs> I was gonna check my so the Hornets, <laughs> It's funny. I put Lamelo Ball for underrated and Gordon Hayward for overrated. Okay, like it. I, I, Wizards, I knew you were going with Lamelo. Pool. Yeah, Lamelo's like underrated at this point. Okay. Very underrated. Okay, okay. I like it. I like it. What do y'all think? That uh, is that's not bad. I agree with you wholeheartedly on the Hawks, on the Magic, and and even. Even on on the Wizards, um, so yeah. Listen, you're doing you're doing really good. I think this is this is one of the first like list type things where I think you and I have kind of seen eye to eye. We're normally on <laughs> we're normally on opposite sides, so this is kind of new. Love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Trey and Dejounte, easy picks. Trey Young's got shit on way too much for a down year last year. Everybody is so reactionary to what you've done for me lately. He's gonna bounce back and be fine. He's still Trey Young. Dejounte, very overrated because he put up numbers on a shitty Spurs team. I think he is the definition of good, not great. Always will be. I think he doesn't do nearly enough with the ball in his hands to be so special that it should be in his hands that much. And he's just straight up not good with the ball out of his hands. Franz Wagner, most underrated player in the league. Him and Jamie Daniels. Love it. Bam. I love it. I was like, I guess. Not a lot of underrated players in the heat. They're very hyped. And uh, Don, this says, Ant, you fucked it up again to kill. <laughs> you put Anthony in, uh, in Miami. It's supposed to be Tyler Hero there. I don't feel like Tyler Hero is that overrated, but, you know, it's got to be somebody. Yeah. And I think LaMelo Ball is one of the more underrated young players in the league right now. People just forget because he was so injured, but he's on the path to legitimately being a special lead guard who can be pushing to, like, superstar territory. Obviously, he's already an all-star, but he can be, like, a centerpiece of a team that can actually contend one day. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I like this. I like this. Um, Yeah, I mean, I don't have too much to say. Lamelo on point. I, I'm not going to go to bat with you between Kuz and Poole. It is what it is. The Hawks, of <laughs> course, I agree. I think, you know, the Trae Young, Trae Young hate has just been insane. Team USA basketball, him crying about it. Um, this is just nasty talk, and I'm happy that we all see pretty much eye to eye with that. So it's cool. All right. Nice. Cool. All right. We'll, we'll get to, to my five. Isaac, same exact with you. I think Trey's a little bit underrated right now. I think DeJounte's overrated. I think Franz, uh, Franz Wagner is underrated. I think Jonathan Isaac is overrated. Not by a lot of people in like NBA, <laughs> in like the NBA By Ted Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of people who watch a certain news network that still think that he's an NBA player because they always put it on the ticker. He hasn't played a game in four years. People have had <laughs> entire careers since the last time Isaac played a game. So that's yeah. ridiculous. Uh, for the Heat, Ben Shapiro loves him. Yeah, for the Heat, I have Tyler Hero as both underrated and overrated. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit of both. It, this really just depends on, I on agree. who you're talking to. I agree. Yeah. For underrated for the Hornets, it's really nobody because for me, I was thinking about Lamelo in that space, and he is at least in my mind. I don't know how to gauge him because on one hand, I do think that he is underrated and that like. He was hurt a lot last year. He is a very good playmaker. He can do a lot of things to really elevate the Hornets. But also, I look at him, him, Tyrese, and Ant all got contract extensions this summer. They all got the same, like, you know, Supermax deal, da, da, da. I think that Ant and Tyrese are in a different tier than LaMelo. And so... Yeah. But when I think about, okay, these are the guys who have the max contracts moving forward. LaMelo is kind of lumped in there and I don't think that he quite belongs there. So that's why I'll yeah. put, that's why I'll put him at overrated. Yeah. Okay. But I think that's, that's I think, but also fine. like, and then like, I think you yeah. think there, he's not in that tier because he missed year three and didn't give a chance to prove it. Well, yeah. no, I've, I've, had, I've had, I've had a couple questions about LaMelo um, just as like a high, as, as a score, his, his defense. You guys joke about me, but we've seen two 
we've seen two talking games about them damn playing in, games bro. in high Come leverage on. moments and it hasn't been great and so I'm just 19 wondering. and 20 yeah Fuck off. let it go god <laughs> geezer <laughs> shit <laughs> they've had questions they've had i've had questions okay that's uh, it man anyways overrated for the hornets kelly Oubre. people he's 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 too pretty. He's too pretty. People, <laughs> they they think he's like the you know the prettiest player in the league. He's not that anymore. He's past his prime. And then Facts. for the Wizards, I think Denny Avia is kind of underrated. I think he's a really good okay. he's a really good defender, and people really just they don't care about the Wizards. Um, so <laughs> I like I like him as underrated. And I just had to pick somebody as over as overrated Damn. for the Wizards. Uh, Landry Shamit, you are a streaky shooter, and I think that you caught fire in last. Uh, in last year's playoffs, so people think that you're a better shooter than what you are. So you're over. Damn. Laundry, Landry nobody crazy, fucks crazy. with nobody fucks with Shamit, bro. Damn. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it is what it is. Um every Suns fan hated his ass last year. He really? got so much PT. Monty Williams loved him and they were just like, why is he on the court so much? They loved him. He was not a good shooter in the regular season. Wow. I wouldn't know that, bro. I guess Shama deserves it. Oh well. I, I was standing back when he was in college. It is what it is, though. Yeah. Only thing Stand that Randy I have in college. Look, let's not have these conversations because what I'm about to say <laughs> is even worse. I was gonna have a whole dialogue about Denny Avdia, but we don't have time for those conversations. All I'm gonna say <laughs> is that he's on the fence of being just a meh bench player who can do mad things who really can't shoot and those yeah. really aren't really ultra valuable in the nba but he's That's a cool player yeah. anyway let's just go ahead into my list speed run um underrated of course i wanted to put trey young but i had to put some shine on jalen johnson if you go ahead and look at his stats okay. god damn bro they're not that pretty but when he was <laughs> on the court <laughs> when he was on the court he showed some connecting things that would help bring in Trey Young and DeJounte Murray and also AJ Griffin and DeAndre Hunter and just <laughs> be he would clog a lot of holes that we have as a team because A, yeah. he's a fucking freight freight train. He has hops. He's that he's a vertical threat. Maybe LeBron. And then on top of that, he has vision. Now I'm not he thinking said, listen. Listen, listen, listen. He ain't done shit yet, but he could. <laughs> listen. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, I think Jalen Johnson is going to have a fantastic year, and he's going to be a big part of – not a big part of the reason. Let me slow down, okay? He's going to be one of the key reasons why the Hawks have a turnaround season because of the more flowy offense. And if we do involve more ball movement, it's going to be mainly because of him because he's such an, un an unselfish player. DeJounte Murray, overrated, whatever, cool. Franz Wagner, Jonathan Isaac, we locked in. Yeah. Kyle Lowry, Tyler Hero, Charlotte Hornets. Mark Williams, and I also put in LaMelo because, like you said, Isaac, he just hasn't played and no one really remembers how good he was and how generational I feel like his passing has the potential to be. Um, yeah. Overrated, bro. Who is good enough for me to call them overrated? They won like 20-something, 30 games. I'm not doing that. <laughs> so okay. man, it gets hard. It gets really, it really hard. And Nikhil, can you update my list? Can you put Jonathan Isaac for the Magic for me? I, I don't need to throw Cole Anthony strays. I just pick the name out of my ass. I don't think Cole Anthony's overrated at all. Yeah. John Isaac deserves all the strays. Clean the rest <laughs> of the list. Clean the sweep. We are locked. Uh, a live update just to kick Jonathan Isaac's ass. I love it, bro. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Jonathan Isaac is so irrelevant. I spelled his name wrong, and I spelled it as if I, how I spell your name, Isaac. He's just so gone, bro. He just <laughs> doesn't Isaac's name wrong, too. <laughs> Well, I no, I know my I name like John Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't know how to spell. Like that. <laughs> hey, spelling be me. Say it again. Say it one more time. I won. I won I'll do what. See me after this video. <laughs> all right, all right. And then watch the Wizards. JP for underrated and Denny overrated. We don't have to have real conversations, but I think <laughs> JP is going to show its value because he has not a lot of pressure and he can just let that motherfucker fly. With no judgment. Yeah, I, mean, I can see that. He's probably got a little too much hate. People are saying like he's like absolutely useless. Yeah. So he'll, he'll look better this year, but prove that shit first. Yeah, <laughs> he, yeah, was, he was not That's good last year. That's fair to say. I think he can Denny easily overrated. prove it with a team like the Wizards, bro. <laughs> Who rates Denny like that? <laughs> <You put> Denny <laughs> Listen, I will have nasty conversations <laughs> over here about <laughs> That's Denny. That's a shot at me. All right. Look, no, it's not even a shot at you, bro. I had high hopes back in 2019 or 2020, actually. I said that this man's NBA draft comparison was Ben, uh, ben Simmons light with a jump shot. I was misled. I was oh, delusional. Nice. I was dead wrong. Yeah, it was a crazy it's comparison. Bad, that was ridiculous. Yeah, well, that's on you. Let's see. 
Yeah. Yeah. You always want to hear some DeJounte Murray stats so I can tell you why he's super overrated? No, God. Let's dude, move on. Dude, 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 <laughs> do it quickly, I guess. So, like I said, not good enough of the ball in his hands to be somebody that can really drive your offense at an elite level. Putrid with the ball out of his hands. On spot-up plays last year, which, no, is real important when you're playing next to somebody like Trey Young, he was in the 29th percentile. Bottom third of the league as a spot-up player. When he had the ball in his hands as a pick-and-roll ball handler, 0.96 points per possession. Decent, not great. Trey Young's at like 1.04. That's like a great pick-and-roll ball handler. You look at his ISOs, take up 16% of his plays. Big amount. 50th percentile. Mm. Pure mid. Mm. Literal definition of mid, right in the middle of all guards. He cuts on 1.5% of his plays. 33rd mm. percentile. Bottom third of the league. How'd I feel, Mo? He runs Just off-screen shut plays up. on 3% of his plays. <laughs> 23rd percentile. There's not a single element of off-ball play that he does at an above-average level. Embarrassing. But, but you know what yep. he can do, Over, though? Overrated. You know what he can do, though? Talk about that grind. Talk about the trenches. Talk about he how he got it from the mud. That's important. Good for him. All right. I'm sure he had a really tough upbringing, and I'm happy he made it to the NBA. He should not be playing next to Trey Young. It's ridiculous. Yeah. He's a terrible fit with Trey Young. Yeah. He's a very good player that should be in a team that doesn't already have a star point guard. Yeah, exactly. Ridiculous. The Hawks have upper management issues, and that's the only reason why he was a part of this roster. Um, wrestler, go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, right. Let's move on to the next division. Yeah. W- which one's up? Which one's up next? We have the South Southwest Division. Yeah. This would be a fun one. So underrated and overrated. I have for the Rockets, Tari wow. Eason is underrated, and Kevin Porter Jr. is overrated. I don't think people really rate him like that, but it's like who actually gonna pick? Spurs. I have Devin Vassell and Keldon Johnson. Pelicans, Trey Murphy and Brandon Ingram. Woo! The Grizzlies. I know, it's a weird one. I, I love Brandon Ingram, but it's got to be know. said. Grizzlies, I have Jaron Jackson Jr. and Marcus Smart. Yeah. And then the Mavs, Green, and Kyrie. Woo! Okay. 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 Nice. I, hmm, I'm trying to see. Something I that think, I... Go ahead. Wait, t- okay. Talk talk to me about Tari Eason. Talk, mm. Yeah. Because the, the Rockets have a lot of guys... And this young core, especially now that like Van Vliet and, and Udoka mm-hmm. are there, everyone's like, listen, they have a, a young core that could be molded. And Eason is a name that's been popping a lot. What what are you seeing with Tar Eason? Why is he underrated? Yeah. He is just a bulldozer to the rim. Great finisher. You see him in like summer league and stuff like that. And we're playing against lower level talent. He looks like fucking LeBron. He puts his shoulder down and gets wherever he wants. And you still see that in the NBA. He's a great finisher at the rim. All his rim finishing stats are above average. He has that. Doesn't have the outside shot yet, but he profiles as a really good rim finisher. But even on top of that, he's just a playmaker at all the little things. In terms of steal and block percentage, he's in the 93rd percentile in steal percentage and 98th percentile for forwards. And 90, 98th percentile in block percentage. So he's a top three shot blocker as a forward in the league. Pretty incredible. The fact he only does this without getting a ton of minutes is impressive. He gets an offensive rebound on 10% of his team's misses. For a forward... He's 6'8", yeah, a yeah. forward. He plays the three, sometimes four, 10% offensive rebound percentage. That's absurd. Isaac, the analytics assassin. He will get you with all the percentages, <laughs> all the angles, of the all the deep cuts. You want that on that podcast? This is what he will provide you with. You ain't never yeah, hear anybody talk a- about Torian <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a perfect role player to play next to players that have more of a high usage and will be the scorers for you. He'll come out here and be the defensive playmaker who clean the boards, do all the small things you need, which is essential when you're a team like the Rockets who are building around bigs and guards. Having yeah. that guy in the middle is going to prove to be incredibly valuable as his core starts to you know, develop into a winning team. Absolutely. I, I agree. I'm with it. I'm with it. I, yeah. I can, and Kevin I can, Porter I can, Jr., he just dribbles real good. Yeah, he just dribbles real good. Yeah. The yeah. highlight of Kevin Porter Jr. is when he put 50-something points on Drew Holiday's head and when he got traded to the uh, Houston Rockets initially and a lot of people are going crazy with the James Harden love so anyways that's all I gotta say <laughs> yeah. yeah very fun player miscast as a point guard once he gets to a role as being a shooting guard probably off the bench I think will be solid yeah he's nice alright all right, let's let's roll into my five for the Rockets I have Jalen Green is underrated Sangoon is overrated for, Ooh, okay. for the Spurs I have Zach Collins as underrated Keldon Johnson as overrated yep. for the Pelicans same as Isaac uh, Trey Murphy, Brandon Ingram is the one that's overrated. 
Wow. For the Grizzlies, I I genuinely feel, and like I know this is a cop out, but I genuinely feel like nobody's Cowards, underrated. Man. I genuinely Cowards. feel that way, and I think I that Desmond that. Bain is is just a little bit overrated. And then for the Mavs, I think Seth Curry is a little bit underrated, and I think that Luca is a little bit overrated. Wow, Luca was overrated. He, he, he was, was he was his he was his MVP pick last year, huh? I he remember was. No, the no, year. He, no, 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 no. So. Yeah, we yeah, have a TikTok about you telling me when yeah. we get our award check in around February. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, pre- you on evidence? Pre- you trying okay, to lie yeah, like that? Right. Yes, that, yeah. that's right. <laughs> yeah, bro, they were like a nine seed when you said that. Preseason, it was MB, and then we saw the stuff that that Luca was doing, and yeah, I, you saw that nine seed Luca, and you were like, "Give it to him." Hold yourself going, accountable. I was just going off a of precedent. That's all I was doing. <laughs> however, however, what I think with Luca, and I just watched the I watched the video, a thing in basketball video the other day, and he's doing this series on like, on like, um, like irregular, you know, like offensive engines, right? And so he had this he had this episode on Allen Iverson, and he's talking about how Allen Iverson, you know, like people look at him as like the shot chucker and and his play style even whenever he went to a team with better offensive players it didn't necessarily translate to like a better offensive team and that his style is kind of built for teams that really don't have anybody and that he's more of a floor raiser than a ceiling raiser and i i low-key am starting to get the same vibe with luca i i'm they trade for Kyrie last year and like I think that one the fact that the vibes were completely off in the moment they they got luca I mean, from the moment they got Kyrie, they missed the play in. He feels the same way as like, hey, if you give him nobody and his play style, which is very ball dominant, he can do everything. You're obviously going to have to get the right pieces around him defensively, shooters, that that type of stuff. But I don't think I don't think his shooting is good enough to say like a, a prime James Harden to where you can realistically ask him to, you know, go on a whole bunch of other different teams and kind of mesh with a lot of other people. And so I I, I feel like there's some limitations with, with Luca. And I think you're crazy as hell. You out of your mind. You out of your fucking yeah, mind. Okay. I think you're insane. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 knew, I knew what you guys were gonna say, but there's No, just, I get yeah. it. I get it. I see why you say that. It's not it's not crazy. I'm joking. You know I don't agree, but I see I see the signs that you see and why you reach those conclusions. Mm-hmm. I think the difference is it's just, like it's, start, it's just starting to feel that way. Not not even I know what you mean. Not, not even that this is like my definitive, you know, take on Luca. No, I get it. I get yeah, it. okay. But it's like the difference between yeah. like let's say the Allen Iverson comparison. The difference there is Allen Iverson was you if you want to say Luca's an inefficient shot chucker to some degree, then you compare that to Allen Iverson, sure. The difference is AI was a slightly above average passer for being generous, and Luca is the second best passer in the NBA. When it comes to setting people up, he is the best at it outside of Nikola Jokic and maybe LeBron James. That's the difference there where it gives him that ceiling of why he's talked about as one of the best offensive players in the league. That is like truly a difference maker with him. Yes. But there is some flaws in his game that he has to come around and fix. He has to get better off ball, let Kyrie cook to maximize their ceiling. So if you want to say he's overrated because he hasn't fixed those flaws yet and people talk about it like he has, I understand. I just wouldn't project for that to be a long-term issue. But I, yeah. I mean, I think yeah. I I think the projection is is fair. Because I don't think that there's anything that Luka has shown in his time in the NBA that that says, oh, he's good at at playing off the ball. He's good at, at giving up control mm-hmm. of the offense. He's good at being a wingman for another primary ball handler. And, yeah. and so if you ask me, hey, how's the next decade of Luka's career going to go? It's probably going to go kind of similar to this. Like he's going to be very ball dominant. And yeah. again, not not even like to hate or to start anything, but a lot of the stuff that we're seeing like with Trey Young, we're probably going to see with Luca, it's going like. It's a but there's a difference, though. There's a difference because I will say, as an Atlanta Hawks fan, we did a pretty good job of building a team around Trey Young. And we then you have got to every Murray. almost every exactly whatever pretty. That's why I said pretty good. <laughs> but over there in Dallas, they did the most horrendous job anyone could <laughs> possibly do. He's never had a young core like Trey Young. He never came up with anybody, bro. The the only player that you know he kind of likes playing, or uh, Mark Cuban kind of had him playing playing alongside just a little bit, and then they shipped his ass out of there. Was Dennis Smith Jr., bro? He's never had anyone remotely around his age that he can actually run with, build with, mold with, or yeah. anyone who can. He's never even had an opportunity until this past yeah. season to play with someone like a Kyrie Irving. The closest thing to and that prior is Jalen Brunson, but Jalen Brunson is like. 
it's a, it's a sticky situation with Jalen and also mm-hmm. Spencer Dinwiddie. So I think he just needs yeah. more opportunity, more of a team. He needs a legit center who can fucking slant, who's a vertical threat and actually block, block shots. I don't want to see him fight for his life with Maxi Kleber and fucking Dwight Powell. Like if you put that core alongside any other young player in the NBA, they're struggling. They're in mud. They're yeah. in hell. I, and I, they're I, not I even making. A I understand. So I like, understand that they're struggling, yeah. and and I'm. I'm not saying that like Luca's not top ten or, or whatever. Like that's yeah. not that's not where my gripe is because I understand that Luca's Luca's ability to floor raise because of his passing ability is amazing. I'm saying when we start talking about, you know, I I feel like for the last three, four years, we've come into the seasons like, hey, this is the year. Like Luca, he's True. made he made all NBA last year. He's probably gonna win MVP this year. Like the Mavs are gonna do it, they're gonna do it. And it just hasn't happened, and obviously part of that is is team construction. But we also haven't seen Luca make sizable jumps in those holes in his game. I don't, and, I don't think that part's true. That's and where think, we disconnect. And I think, yeah. What, Let me explain. If we, if we, if we, no, I'm I'm saying spe- in terms of like the holes. I'm saying specifically with defense and off ball and off ball play. I just don't think it matters because I, I agree with your points in general. Trading is a good comparison because I think those flaws matter for him. It doesn't matter for Luca because he's legitimately going to be one of the greatest ball handlers of all time in terms of offensive production and being a lead guard. You said you don't know if he can be a secondary playmaker next to someone like Kyrie. Doesn't matter. Luca is one of the most talented players with the ball in his hands of all time already. It's ridiculous. 32 points per game on over 60% true, sh- true shooting percentage while being the second best passer in the NBA. The only people that can compare are LeBron James and James Harden. James Harden isn't in that caliber because every year in the playoffs, he falls off a fucking cliff and can't perform with his style of play. We don't have those questions with Luka Doncic. We look at his playoff uh, series over his career, 31 points per game, 35 points per game, 29, 32, 32. He's risen in the playoffs every single year. He's continued to be a better and better scorer every single season while maintaining that level of passing. You don't see that downside when it comes to his production that you see with someone like James Harden or someone like Trey Young who's too small and can be attacked in the playoffs like you saw the Miami Heat do. So it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, if he can be a secondary ball handler when he is the best primary ball handler in the entire league. It yeah. does matter though. And it does, mm-hmm. it does, it does matter if you are because nobody's going to be able to win a championship by themselves, right? Like that's that's true. If if you if, if anybody can, it's gonna be him. I Listen, I just if I you disagree. had regular season dis- James Harden. I disagree. I disagree. Dude, if James imagine the best year of regular season James Harden, if he did that in the playoffs. You would be like this, that, that, that's crazy, and that's what Luca does. Like you give him the proper team. I'm gonna say by himself. I know, like that's hyperbolic. He can't do it by himself, but that comes down to team building and finding a team that can succeed around his play style. He has that type of play style and has risen to the occasion every single time and challenged teams with a far better depth chart than he has. I think he has a style of play that he can overcome those weaknesses. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm, un, I'm unsure. I about think, it. I think to close this off real quick. You'll get all all your answers will get re- resolved when they put a competent, re- real ass center next to him instead of pairing up Max Kleber, Christian Wood, and all them boys, and just fill out the roster alongside Kyrie. Irving. So <laughs> we can move suck. in. Yeah, they fucking suck, bro, and it's ridiculous. Like yeah. bigs are so important. It's some of the easiest points that I'm not getting into it. Let's go ahead and bring up my list so we can let's like speed through this <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a good debate though. I, I appreciate yeah. that off the wall pick because. There is a lot of nuance on the Luca discussion at this point of his career. This yeah. type of season coming up is where he's going to answer those questions. So I don't think it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Shot. Yeah, I'm excited for them. He has a lot to prove, and uh, let's just roll into it. So for the Houston Rockets, I have Tory Eason, overrated. I have Jalen Green. I I don't think he provided. I don't. I didn't see in the areas that I wanted to see growth. I didn't see that at all, and I think he just stayed basically the same player who just took the same or took more shots we can yeah. talk about that later if you want it is what it is <laughs> san antonio spurs underrated devin vassell overrated keldon johnson um overrated for keldon johnson is pretty much a clean sweep we are right here yeah norwich pelicans over underrated trey murphy we are right here clean sweep. and overrated i have cj mccollum memphis grizzlies uh underrated Marcus Smart and Tillman. I'm a t- big Tillman guy. And then when it comes to overrated, nice. <laughs> when it comes to overrated, 
I have Zaire Williams. Dallas <laughs> Mavericks. <laughs> okay. Yeah, bro. It's like... It, he does, he does not deserve those 15 minutes a game. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I know. I'm the worst person to talk about basketball. Well, his with, ass to the French. Yeah. <laughs> Dallas Mavericks, <laughs> underrated. Um, Josh Green, he's hard as hell. Nice. And then when it comes to overrated, uh, Grant Williams, he's great. But I don't, you know, I, f- I don't know. Maybe it's just cause my algorithm is tweaking, but I people are talking about him like he's a third star or some shit like that, in my opinion. So I'm not really going to You, just, you follow some numb skulls. <laughs> Grant Williams is fine. Facts. <laughs> he's just Grant Williams. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. So, which anything. I love how we all put Kelvin ours? Johnson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the Pelicans real quick before we move on. We, we both to. put Ingram. You put CJ. I don't think putting CJ is crazy. Yeah. I was just. I'll let you I'll explain why I put Ingram and you can tell us why you didn't yeah so I put Ingram because I'm scared that he is becoming listen I'm the biggest brand Ingram fan in the world you go to my Twitter put my at and type Ingram you're gonna see so much love but I'm scared he's becoming the exact player that I don't like that is decent with the ball in his hands but not good enough to make you a top offense and doesn't do a fucking thing when the ball is not in his hands mm-hmm. I'm worried that's becoming him yeah what do that's you think fair. bro that's fair. Um, my thing with Brandon Ingram, like I almost put him on my list too, but I didn't want to because I just felt like I had more reasons to put someone like CJ McCollum on my list. Um, mm-hmm. Fair. When it comes to Brandon Ingram, like I think he's a better scorer than CJ McCollum, and also he's a better facilitator than CJ McCollum, better defender. But I'm not really sure if that's saying too much because they're both not the greatest of whatnot. But CJ McCollum is just that bad on that end. And so when I look at someone like CJ McCollum. I'm like, you just got paid a big ass bag. David Griffin, suspect GM, by the way, as of late, just extended <laughs> him for fucking no reason whatsoever at all. Um, so I see CJ, you're a fucking great store, a great score, three level guy, and we love to see that the Hezzies are immaculate, some of the greatest. Very handles. good score. We don't gotta give him the great title. He's not whatever, Luka. whatever. You know exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's not Luca. You know what I mean now. Um yeah. but when it comes to the other things that I'm looking at. I think that he doesn't add as much value as you could say someone like Alonzo Ball did a couple years ago or Drew Holiday did a couple years ago for a team like the New Orleans Puckets or what they need. All he does is shoot and do really cool dribble moves on that court. He's not playing no defense. He has a huge issue of playmaking. Same, that's a big part of the reason why the Portland Trailblazers just always fell off a fucking cliff when Damian Miller went off the bench. CJ is not... That's not his go-to thing. Getting people involved, it's not his bag necessarily. And uh, that's why I I had him over Ingram when it comes to just saying he's overrated. Okay. I, I think people know that more, and I think people have higher expectations for Ingram because of style of play. Everybody loves a big wing who can get a bucket. Yeah. And I think people continue to project forward for Ingram to continue to develop like he's still a young guy. He's 25, but about to be 26. Or, yeah, he turned 26, I think, this week. Yeah. He's not young. This is who he is. And I think he's a very useful, good player. Could sneak in a couple more All Star games, maybe, but he's just not going to make that next level leap people want him to make. I don't think he was supposed yeah. to be. He was supposed to be big bro, main guy on Team USA. Can't can't even get the shine on there. Baby I'm, Durant, I'm really? Exactly. Or he got benched today for Josh Hart. Exactly. That is embarrassing. Pack it up. Pack it. That up. That is embarrassing. Yeah. The superstar ship has sailed. God, yeah, it's, it's over. over. Psychic status. But he's still really <laughs> good. It's just not quite as good as people think. Let's go to the next yeah. division. Next one we got, going back to the East. Central. What's the divi- Central division. You, you got to say, Mo, I'm never going to know this. <laughs> I, <got you. laughs> I know one is called Atlantic. I guess that's the East we haven't done yet. That's the only one I know. <laughs> yeah. I know Atlantic. I know Pacific. Other than that, it's just a bunch of words. But yeah, underrated and overrated. For the Bucks, I have Brooke Lopez. And overrated, I have Grayson Allen. For the Bulls, I have Zach Levine and Patrick Williams. For the Pacers, Andrew Nemhard and Buddy Woo! Hill. <laughs> For the Pistons, Jalen Duran and Joe Harris, and the Cavs, Darius Garland and Karis Levert. Oh man, Sol- solid picks. Love the Brook Lopez. Love. We are. Yeah, I, I, we honestly, are I think a very pro. We are a, a also a very pro Brook Lopez and a very pro Darius Garland pod. So I like those very as pro well. Darius Garland. He's getting so slept on just because Donovan Mitchell came and took the shine, and there's been a lot of point guards exploding last year. De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton, etc. Jamal Murray, for that matter, Jalen Brunson. Just a lot of other guards to talk about last year while Darius Garland became a sidekick. He is just as good as those guys. Going to be better than some of those names I said. I won't tell you which ones. I don't want to get yelled at, but he's in that mix, and people don't realize it. I love it. I love it. 
I love it. I, like it. I also love the Andrew Nembhard thing. Uh, very Shout good. Out him. He's so good. Yeah, very good. Very good guard off the bench for the Indiana Pacers. He literally came out of nowhere in my mind. Um, but he's such a valuable asset to have when you know you have a star player like Tyrese Halliburton, who's missed time uh, this this last this last season. So I fucking love this shit, dog. The only thing I don't like is Patrick Williams. We've had that conversation before. It's kind of wash, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Did that one for you again? There's just nobody overrated on the Bulls. Yeah. Everybody on the Bulls gets shit on all the time. People talk about them like they're just like a steaming pile of wet cardboard. Like it's yeah. just like nobody gives a shit about them. Like yeah. what am I about Vucevic? Nobody likes Vucevic. Like I don't know. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. Let, let's speed run through this division. I think this is with the least interesting yeah. group. Yeah, for sure. Let's throw our names out there. All right. So for my underrated for the Bucks, I have Pat Connaughton. Overrated, Chris Middleton. Okay. Um, for the Bulls, I have Javon Carter. Underrated. Patrick, Ooh, good pick. Pat, Patrick Williams for overrated. Uh, for the Pacers, OB is underrated. Ben, uh, yeah. No, no. OB is underrated. Benedict Matherin is overrated. For the Pistons, wow. for the Pistons, Sadiq Bay is underrated. Kate whoa, 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 whoa. Pause real quick. Sadiq Bay is on the Atlanta Hawks, my brother. And that's oh why you goodness. are lower on the Hawks. I'm tripping. Yeah. I'm tripping. Yeah, that's why you're low on the spacing. I'm going to be going crazy. through the rosters. I'm, yeah. That's on me. That's on me. That's you're on wrong me. Wrong time. You good. That's on me. I'm tripping. Dang, I'm really Get a embarrassed job. right now. I'm really embarrassed right now. <laughs> <laughs> we need plumbers. Way, overrated is Cade Cunningham? <laughs> yeah, I, I, still have, I still have some questions on, on Cade. Um, and then for the Cavs, underrated is Darius Garland. Overrated is uh, Evan Mobley. You just don't like wow. tall guards who can pass. <laughs> he don't no, like tall light skin no. guards who can pass, <laughs> no, bro. That's what like, it is. Let's talk like about tall it. I don't like tall guards. I don't like tall guards who aren't efficient at the rim or or con- or shooting threes. Like he's not. Yeah. He's not. He's not great. Is his rookie season with? And that's the only one. Actually, no. I'll show. I'll, he's only played two years. His first year, fifty eight percent at the rim, twenty eighth percentile in the league. In the short amount of time, in the 12 games that he played in, in his second year, 54% at the rim, 14%, uh, 14th percentile. For threes, uh, for all threes in his rookie season, 31%, 19th percentile. Yeah. In the 12 games last year, 30% from three, 13th percentile. He has a lot of questions at the most efficient shots in the game yeah. as a big scorer. So he needs to answer those before I truly think that like Kate is going to be this insane franchise cornerstone that we think that he's going to be. Yeah, I understand that. That was okay. I, I'm throwing last year out the window. It's only 12 games. Poor shooting. It's fine. But I agree. I, I He still has to do it. But do the small sample size, I think he will. I see no reason to believe he won't. Mm. If he doesn't, I'll be wrong. But I have all the faith in the world that Kate is going to become a great player. Yeah, absolutely. And I also think like he's become... He fell out of the conversation. Like He's the most forgotten number one overall pick because he's in the Pistons and missed the second year. So like... Yeah. I don't think people would like to rate him highly. Yeah. I think and on, it's kind of like in yeah. line. And on top of that, his game is not necessarily the most like insane or exciting. Like he's going to throw some fantastic passes, but no one's calling him one of the best passes in the NBA. He's going to do some shit really nice with the ball. Nice three level score. He has a potential to be that at least. But, you know, yeah. he's not one of the best scorers in the NBA. He's just a very solid point guard who's. That's true. You know, like, I don't want to say can be the franchise piece of your team, but he can definitely be in that, like, second tier of He definitely of can be a franchise guards. player at some point. He's still I, so young and has played so few games. Like, we, he still has a chance. Yeah, he has a chance. I but think I'm, a, I'm not going to But that three-point shooting has to come back around. He has to come back to sure. college shooting. That's the biggest concern is that has not been there in the NBA. The rim scoring, I can guarantee, is going to go up there. I don't have – just no part of me that thinks he's going to be a poor rim finisher. But that three-point shooting, that's the scariest part. If that doesn't come around, he'll never make the true start leap. Yeah, I can agree to that. I can agree to that for sure. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to mine. Shout out to Pat Connington. <laughs> uh, see most so of us. For the Milwaukee Bucks, overrated and are underrated and overrated. Brooke Lopez. We are a Brooke Lopez podcast. We said it, and I'm standing 10 toes down on it. Overrated. Just a little bit. I'm not, you know, staying, staying no, going spinning. to war for you're it. Spinning. Say it. Drew Holiday. You're uh, spinning. Chicago Bulls. Underrated, Zach Levine, whatever. Overrated, Lonzo Ball. I just don't think he's going to change the entire trajectory of that franchise. Indiana Pacers, (laughs) underrated. (laughs) He's nice, though, but whatever. (laughs) Indiana Pacers, (laughs) underrated. Obi, 
overrated. I'm not listing a player from that team because they're extremely young and there's not too much there. Cowards. <laughs> Detroit Pistons. Underrated. Cade. I think a lot of people forget how good he is, but I'm not blaming that on anybody because he literally hasn't played basketball in ages. Only played 12 games this year. It's insane. Um, and overrated. I don't know why I put James Wiseman there. I think I just put that there to hate gen- genuinely, bro, because no one thinks he's overrated. <laughs> Everyone thinks he's no an ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Cleveland Cavaliers, yeah. underrated. Jared Allen. I know this day will come where he eventually gets traded and, you know, Cavs at the folks front office to realize, you know, until Evan Mobley gains a jumper, our ceiling as a team is capped with them playing together. Because it's naturally in the NBA and also with how their team has been constructed in the past. I don't know if uh, Max Struess will change lives for them 110%, but they just need more spacing for Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell to cook. And I think Jared Allen will definitely be the odd man out, rightfully so. But with him being the odd man out, I still think he can be a huge plus and a defensive anchor to any team that he will probably get traded to in the next, I don't know, two, maybe yeah, two and a half sure. years. He's good. People definitely, he, they forget he was an all-star year before last. Like, he's a great player. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And overrated Carousel. It's so funny. Lonzo and Wiseman, you're just punching down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just have to. Like, I'm not I'm not going back and forth. with that. Your leg doesn't like, work? Yeah. Bum. You don't get anything? <laughs> Bum. <laughs> <laughs> Flick him in the uh, forehead. Yeah, but other, other than that, the only thing that the craziest thing that people will probably have to say is maybe the Drew Holiday thing. I love me some Drew Listen, Holiday. No, nah, I think that's fair. I think I, that's fair. There has let to be. Let me say some numbers. Go ahead. Go crazy. Wait, and before you go, before you say your numbers, let me say my just general knowledge things. Offensively, Drew Holiday, you are wildly inconsistent. It's like he can have 20 plays where he's a straight up brick offensively shooting six for 20. But he has that one defensive highlight, two, three defensive highlights. Everybody forgets about this shit. And, and yeah. it's easy to forget about when you have someone like Giannis on your team and Chris Middleton whenever he decides to be healthy as well. So, yep. He, in his last six playoff series, we'll go seven. So it's the last since 2021 through now. So, which is the year they won the title through now. 40, and I'm going to say his field goal percentage in each series. First one, we're starting from 2021, 48%. Good series in the first round of 2021. Next series, 36%, 46%, 36%, 40%, 36%, 40%. Almost every single playoff series besides the first round of 2021 and the conference finals, he has been under 40% from the field or just barely touching it. Like you said, wildly inconsistent. We give him a pass because he's the best guard defender. One of the like maybe five to seven best guard defenders in the history of the league, probably top tier truly. But offensively, nobody else gets that kind of pass for that inefficient shooting. Yeah. And it's not even that he gets a pass. We just don't talk about it. No one cares. And they yeah. should at least a little bit. Yeah, exactly. That's I don't know what it is, but Drew Holiday, at least in the Players Association, I feel like that has had a, his respect, the immense respect that people have for him. I'm not saying people shouldn't have for it, have the respect for him. But, like, there's just so much that people don't look at because the defense, like you said, Isaac, is some of the best we've seen. And so, uh, like, the, he can get away with those inconsistencies, but in this podcast, I'm just calling it out. Like, he, if he yeah. performed a little bit better, the Bucks would have had a, lot, a hell of a lot easier time getting through the teams that they had to get through over the last few years. So, oh, yeah. A hundred percent. For so long, he was, the, he was the guy where he's like, oh, Drew Holiday's so underrated. He's so underrated. Exactly. And so now nobody just wants to make the overcorrection back. So, like, we're not giving him that slander. But, yeah, he definitely deserves it. For sure. Nice. All, All right. right. L- let's move on to the next division. Next up, we have the Atlantic. I know this one. I've been let's waiting go. for this. Underrated and overrated. Celtics, I have Derek White and Jalen Brown. I almost had a brain fart. I forgot his last name for a second. What the hell? Yeah. 76ers, I have DeAnthony Melton and Joel Embiid. Raptors, Jaco Podol and Scotty Barnes. Knicks, Jalen Brunson and RJ Barrett. And Nets, Dennis Smith Jr. and Spencer Dinwiddie. <laughs> the Nets is so hilarious. No one's talking about them. I'm not mentioning them at all. <laughs> I'll mention that Dennis Smith Jr. has quietly become a de- basically elite guard defender. Like legitimately. He's 85th percentile in block percentage, 90th percentile in steal percentage, and their defense is 10 points per 100 possessions better when he's on the court. That's the difference between having a 110 offensive rating and a 100. 
That is 99th percentile. That's the second best guard in the NBA. That's in very terms of how much better they make their defensive play. In terms of how much better they make the defense when they're playing. That is very he's surprising. Great. Wow. Yeah, he's legitimately been a shout out, like, shout out defensive stopper. Shout out Dennis. Yeah. Good, good for him. him. Man. Good for him. We love that. <laughs> um, and then Scotty Barnes overrated. He has a 49% effective field goal percentage. It's disgusting. He can't put the ball in the hoop. <laughs> I, I, I'm not real like scorey, scorey points in the basket type guy, but he just can't do that shit. There was a TikTok last year, Isaac, that we made. Don't even talk about it. Kenny. And I asked you a specific question. I was like, yo, would you trade Victor Wembanyama for Scotty Barnes? You said no. I th- I don't know what Donovan's stance was, but you were pretty hard as, you were hard as hell saying no. Screaming with your chest. Beating at your chest like a damn gorilla. Why? You see what I was talking about. Scotty Barnes has no motion like that. Although, yes, ooh, <laughs> big 6'9 dude who can pass. 6'9 potential point guard. Just be, he's a connecting piece, not a point guard. Just because you can pass a little bit, no one's calling you a point guard. People fool themselves into calling Giannis a point guard because he's big as hell. That's not a point guard. Draymond can do the same shit. Yes, he can go ahead and make passes that the average dude his height can, can't usually make. You know, but that don't make him an astronomical, wildly different player. We've seen this dude before plenty of times in the league, you know? And that was supposed to separate him. His defense was supposed to separate him from the from the rest of the group. It hasn't, bro. So I don't understand how someone like Scotty Martin can consistently say, oh, yeah, I'm a point guard. I'm a point guard. I grew up a point guard in high school and all sort of stuff. When you struggle in the most simplest point guard play in the entire NBA, which is the pick and roll. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I'm giving him grace a little bit. Point guard thing from he doesn't even play point guard. This is just talking like a he calls himself thing. a point guard. He calls himself as a it point guard. Sorry, he says. He's from. not a point guard. He doesn't even play point guard. I know, but his passing overall was supposed to be one of the main strengths of his NBA career, along passer. with his defense. Okay, that is overblown and overrated as well. And I've been on the film, and this is one of the propaganda that I'm pushing during this podcast. Bro. I think his passing might be underrated. He's just not the type of passer that you think when you, apparently you hear the word point guard and you're just like, play like Darius Garland. But no. like, he's a good passer. He's just, you know, a high post passer in transition from hit cutters. Like, he's, he's a good okay. passer. He's <laughs> solid. He's solid, but he's not like someone who you'd want to consistently run your offense through. He's not a number one option I'm, or number two at that as well. You yeah, see what I'm agree. saying? So yeah, that's what a lot of people thought he was. If you... Would rather have Victor Wembanyama <laughs> or over, or would rather have Scotty Bonds over Victor Wembanyama than you expect him to be number two, three type option or number two, one type option? But he's just not that, you know. And now I'm giving him slight grace it. because his team is not constructed around him the best. But at this point, there you go. I'm like, why would I? I don't know. I'm on the fence of if I'd rather, if I'd want to build a team around Scotty Barnes. Sure, I might put a complimentary player here or there, but I don't know if I'm leaning all in on Scotty yet. Listen, right, I so say I'm he's done. overrated. I think he's a little bit overrated. You're making me want to defend him as underrated because you're like, listen, this guy's a bitch. He's Michael Carter Williams. He's terrible. I'm, not, I'm, I'm like, not. I don't think he's no, that, that bad. He literally just called him solid. Like, no, that was your word. <laughs> Nobody said that. I don't think he's that bad. I'm just kidding. Like, uh, I, I think he's, I, I probably still think he's going to be better than you do. But I agree. He the might. Rookie but, of the year hype. Yeah. He should never won rookie of the year. And I let that sway me. I let people convince me that he was going to be that good. And I was like, oh, listen, he could be blossoming into one of the league's most unique ball handlers who can do this passing thing, this connective tissue, while being a very tr- uh, versatile defender. And I rose to any glasses because I saw that award in his trophy case. He doesn't deserve to be in that caliber of player. Uh, yeah. He's a good streamer, though. Shout out to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real funny guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see Donovan's tears. All right. For underrated for the Celtics, I have Jalen Brown. Overrated, I have Robert Williams. For the Sixers, DeAnthony Melton is underrated. And as somebody who had him in fantasy basketball last year, shout out to you. You got me through some hard weeks. Uh, (laughs) P.J. Tucker, extremely overrated. Uh, Wow. For for the Toronto Raptors, Scotty Barnes, I think, is a little bit underrated. Okay. Wow. And um, for overrated, this is actually supposed to be O.J. and Anobi. Uh, I think OJ Ananobi is is overrated for the Knicks. Wow. I think that Josh Hart is underrated, and I think that absolutely nobody is is overrated on on the New York Knicks. Uh, for the Nets, I think Dorian Finney Smith is underrated, and I think that I actually think that Cam Thomas is overrated when when we talk about the Nets. Wow, this list is all fucked up. Okay, so you have <laughs> OG should be in the Raptors. Yeah, Knicks is nobody. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Nets is Cam Thomas. I'm not, I'm not slandering anybody on the Knicks today. Mm-hmm. We, <laughs> we, we, we might have we might have time for that. I don't know. OG is definitely OG is definitely overrated. Yes. People were like the the Raptors were asking for three first yeah. round picks. Yeah. And like, the, exactly. the packages we're talking about is like calm the fuck down. He's a really good wing. Has a little bit of creation chops. Emphasis on a little bit. Great defender. Can shoot really well. Very viable piece you want on your team for yeah. basically any construction. Not going to be a star. Three exactly. first round picks. Calm down. Exactly. Isaac, there's no way a team like the Memphis Grizzlies offer four first round picks, right? For OG under no beats. I mean, listen, if, like if they have and it, you though, say no. If they have it, they should go ahead and do it. But if you're, yeah, the, but if you're the like Grizzlies, the, should yeah, like if you're the Grizzlies or if you're the Thunder or some or somebody like that, if you just have an excess amount of picks and you can just do it, then you might as well. But if you are a like legitimate, just like regular team, you have all your picks. Maybe an extra one here, maybe an extra one there. Yeah, you should not be trading three first round picks for OG and yeah. Anobi. Yeah, yeah. It's, my thing is, is like the Raptors, no, no, no. The the Raptors saying no. The Raptors shouldn't be turning down for exactly. First round picks. That's the biggest thing. That's, that's I don't give a fuck about what the teams value him at. It's about the Toronto Raptors seeing an opportunity to swindle the fuck out of a team and get yeah. more, extract more value than what this actual player is. That way, you re- you will reap the benefits. So yeah. that's my mm-hmm. only thing with OG. I don't think uh, it has nothing to do with on the court. More so, just what this organization thinks of him as. That's it. Yeah, that's very fair. Yeah. Uh, let's see your list, Mo. Let's get yeah. speed through so, this. So my list: the Boston Celtics, underrated and overrated. Chris Porzingis, overrated. Jalen Brown, whatever. I'm not saying ten toes on it. He just needs to prove things a little bit to me more and make I me will. feel better. <laughs> Philadelphia 76ers, DeAndre Melton. We are right DeAndre. here. Oh, D'Anthony, sorry. D'Anthony Melton. We are right here. I made a video about him back in 2018. I was in the NBA trenches for real, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Overrated, Joel Embiid. Toronto Raptors, underrated, Siakam. Overrated, Scotty and OG. New York Knicks, underrated, Emmanuel Quickly. I love that man's game. Overrated, Julius Randle. I just need to see you do it in the playoffs. I'm not holding you against injuries. Trey Young, the playoffs against Atlanta a couple years ago was bad, but your team was super ass. Still, I got to see a little bit more. Um, and the Brooklyn Nets. Cam Johnson's cool. I don't really think he's necessarily underrated. He got a fat-ass contract, um, and he's on Team USA, so how can he exactly. be underrated? Yeah. Overrated. I will say that Macau Bridges is starting to become a little bit overrated in my mind. Oof. There's no way in hell where I'm picking someone like Brandon Ingram over or Mikel Bridges over someone like Brandon Ingram. I need to see you do it a little bit for more real? in the playoffs. Oh, no, that's it, easy for me. That is easy. That's easy for me. Give me Bridges. Give uh, me yeah, Bridges no. for me, too. I, yeah, you, you can say that, but if I can take you out of the playoffs by simply taking away one aspect of your game and you're cooked, you malfunction, you glitch, you don't know what to do, and it's just like I, I, I have to see a little bit more from you. I have to see a little bit more from you before people crown you as this top tier, next level mini Kawhi S player, you know. I well, no one's saying I, that. I can, I, you're, I can you do the you same said thing. Brandon Ingram, not Kawhi. <laughs> I, and I can, listen, and I can do the same thing with Brandon Ingram. If I put another good player next to Brandon Ingram, he's not doing anything. He's not. He's not being a good a good second Lux. star. No. Also, wait, real quick. I'm I'm very curious because you guys got me on. You guys got on me for the Luca thing. Even after this postseason and all the hate that the Sixers have gotten. Do you guys still think that Joel Embiid is overrated? For I don't think enough people talked about the fact that his he's like a playoff dropper. He's James Harden. Like, I think people, some people started to realize it, but it's not the narrative. We're not going to yeah. go in the next season and be like, I don't believe in the Sixers because Joel Embiid is going to fail in the playoffs again. Like we do with James Harden. You will say that because you, you know that. The prevailing narrative will not be that. He's going to contend to get benefit for the doubt because his issues are more health related. Yeah, but he cannot survive a full season in the 16 playoff game playoff run. And and you he said, is legitimately one of the biggest playoff droppers of all time. He's with James Harden yeah, in that category now. Yeah, you say he's with James Harden. You say he's like he, he's like James Harden. I think he's worse than James Harden simply because you can't even <laughs> oh, wow. be on the fucking court, bro. At least James Harden will show up. You know, I've seen, I've seen. He was there this year. He was just ass. Yeah, exactly. I see, exactly. But I want to say show up. I mean, like, are you on the court? Yes or no? Are you playing or do you have a stomach flu? Yes or no? Just let me know ahead of time, yeah. bro. You know, and that on top of on the court performances and all that, like, is just yeah, that's my only thing. That's my only thing with Embiid. He, he has to he prove shot 42% it to me from the field against the Celtics this year. Best score in the yeah, NBA, kind of scoring title winner, MVP, 42% from the field. And that's 
higher than it should be because he had a couple good games. If we look at, we look at some individual games right now, I'll pull it up. He had some fucking don't stinkers. Do don't don't do that. This is gonna get real scary in here. <laughs> yes. Y'all smell that? Mean, bricks, I, mean, damn. Bricks one. <laughs> I knew listen, we all knew we all knew that Embiid is like this playoff choker and he's done it for for years. I got the stats. All right. <laughs> Run them. Game seven against the Philadelphia 76ers. Close out game. Your playoff legacy is on the line. Not really, but you know, for the current <laughs> narrative. 15 points, 18 field goal attempts. Five of them went in, 27% field goal percentage, 0 for 4 from 3, two turno- uh, four turnovers, and was that one assist? That shit stinks! You stink! <laughs> Yuck! <laughs> P.U., get him out of here! <laughs> he had three personal fouls to one assist. Yuck! P.U., get him out of here! Great googly moogly, this brother is a fraud! 7. His plus minus was negative 28! Oh my goodness! Uh, are this these PJ Tucker stacks? What are we talking about? That that's horrendous. That's that's just horrendous. Like, okay, yeah. Granted, he was okay, dealing I with see, the knee sprain that he was playing it. through. I see it. Maybe listen. You don't have to tell me twice. I will up the slander on Joel and me <laughs> for the rest of the offseason. I'll come in. I'll come into the to the regular season hating at an all time level on the Sixers. <laughs> I'm I'm with I'm with you guys. Love it. And listen, regular season, I was defending him a little bit early in the season. I was like, I get why there's people that are like, Jokic absolutely should be MVP. I agreed, but I came around to it and I was like, I understand why he deserves it. It's not like crazy to me to give him the vote, even if I wouldn't have gave it to him. He's still, you know, an incredibly talented scorer and the creation he can do with the ball in his hands as a big man. He can run the fast break a little bit. He can be the hub of your offense, do enough playmaking to his for his scoring to be something you can go to. He's legitimately one of the more talented offensive bigs we've ever seen. Except when it matters in the playoffs. That shit goes out the window. I just fool me once, shame on me, and I'm not gonna fall for this shit again. He is fundamentally broken in the playoffs, bro. Dang. That's all it is. <laughs> and there oh, will wow. be a serious investigation. He will be <laughs> his his stats will be swatted. The gameplay will be swatted <laughs> next year, bro, if he goes ahead and does this again. Joel it's Embiid, you are a suspect. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. I see none of y'all put Jalen Brunson as your next pick. Do y'all think you got to just do or what? Oh, I think so, Listen, for sure. Okay, okay. If we're being real. Oh, God. I had Brunson on my list as overrated. I just didn't want to, <laughs> to, to slander him. Are you out of your mind? I, I, had, I had him just a little bit as overrated, but it's, it was just because, like, you hate so much. You hate the. You hating on the hometown. It was. It wasn't. God, it wasn't man. even hate. It wasn't even hate. I just there was. We've gotten to the point where, where Brunson, and especially now that he's like on on Team USA, we got to a point where it was like, oh, like he should be starting and like leading the team. And it's like, listen, he's really, really good, and he had an amazing season. There's still like levels to this, and he still has like another level to to get to. So like, let's not act like like it is. But I think that Brunson right now. If anything is more like perfectly rated, like I say, I say overrated. Isaac says says underrated. That's one and one. Puts him right at the line. So he's probably <laughs> he's probably good. Do you do you realize how incredible his playoff performance was? No, I and the numbers listen, he had. No, I I'll, I'll, I'll I read you two stat lines. You don't have to. First one, twenty eight point three points per game, four rebounds, four assists, sixty two percent true shooting percentage. That is Donovan Mitchell's regular season. 28 4 and 4 with 62% true shooting. That's all NBA. Second best shooting guard in the league. Jalen Brunson in the playoffs and the hot against good teams on the hot, biggest stage where the game planning for him as a lead ball handler. 28 points, 5.6 assists, 5 rebounds, 59% true shooting. Better than D. Mitch regular season stats that earned him all, all NBA. He's truly a playoff riser this past series and legitimately looked like. His, look at that 28 5 and 5 that's as good as any of these star guards that are coming up that we're giving props to all the time he looked yeah. better than De'Aaron Fox as good as Jamal Murray better than Trey Young all these guys he was on that level legitimately in a, for a full playoff run oh man that's so crazy to say I will never be down right. there better great. than Trey Young thing listen, but listen when it, go ahead I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and, and say that Jalen Brunson sucks so like listen you got me <laughs> you got me I'll say that you're you gonna down talk the best player on your best team exactly. <laughs> on your favorite yeah. team yeah, the one thing that's like I I'm so happy that a lot of people have 
realize is that Jalen Brunson is one of the five best ISO scorers as a point guard in the NBA. And I would nice. say probably, I don't want to say one of the 10 best ISO scorers because just in general, because size and all that shit factors into it. He when might it comes be. to his position, bro, he plays the best brand of bully ball and he is so Facts. unique with how he gets contact and just bounces it off right off of him, bro. He's so Bro. sturdy, stocky, and all that stuff, and he's ultra quick. Yeah. And with that, he has every almost every move in his bag and manage imaginable when it comes to within the paint and also in the mid range. So it's just like, bro, the only thing that anyone can really like poke a hole in his game is that okay, he's not the best facilitator or, or anything like that. But in my mind, when you're that level of ISO scorer, you don't fucking need to be. It doesn't matter. Go yeah. get and me he's a, a bucket. He's a good passer too. He's, a, he's an underrated passer. I think, um, what was I going to say? I just read a text and I my, lost my train of thought. But yeah, man, he's great. We, we, we move on to the next division. Donovan, you, you just fucked my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> my, my bad. We're actually, we're actually done. We're, we've gone through all the divisions. This was the last. What? Oh, this is the last division? Yeah. This was so fun, one man. one left. No. Nah. Nah, we're this good. was so yeah, fun. Yeah, this, this is great conversations, man. And now, so we got through that. We're supposed to react to the top 20 list you told people to drop in the Discord. We're, it's already a long episode. I think we should do that next week because we're going to have a short episode next week. So that gives us an even better opportunity now to say, everybody listening right now, join our Discord, go to the question of the day thread, and go to the part that says, leave your all-time top 20 list in there. You'll see the thread. Double-click it. And leave your top 20 list in there. We're going to react to them next week. I want to give more of y'all a chance to go ahead and get your list in there. If they're really bad, we're going to roast you. If they're good, we'll give you your pops. If we're reacting, we're more than likely going to roast you. So be prepared for that. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. We'll do that next week. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Guys, I think it is time for TikTok time. Let's get into it. Crayon ears rejoice. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That sounds like a running thing where if there's ever an episode where you don't call them crayon eaters, I'll be concerned. I, yeah, like, I, I just know the, the light isn't in your eyes today. Something's going on at home. We need to check on you. It's probably because you're in the hood. We, we got to figure it out. <laughs> yes. Yo, is the, right the gone? is the right gone? I ain't going to lie. No. I called an exterminator <laughs> yesterday or last week. Nikhil, you sent me to a fraud. This man did nothing but put up poisonous fried chicken all across my house. And all these poisonous bastards are running charged. around mindless. That's, that's I could have done that myself. That's racist. That's crazy. Yeah. Alright, man. Yeah, I got scammed. Let's just say that. Trying to catch Mo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I did not deserve that. <laughs> See, but if I said it, <laughs> 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 The first oh. TikTok we got today, <laughs> as always, we're going to start with the draft. <laughs> today, we're going to draft only players that currently play in the Western Conference. Let's do it. <laughs> so the draft order is me first, Donovan second, Mo third. Oh, okay, let's do it. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I'm proud of that word. Uh. <laughs> All right. Let's draft NBA lineups with only players who play in the Western Conference. First pick, give me the best player in the world, Nikola Jokic. Damn. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. I will okay. take, I guess, yeah, I'm going to take the second best player. I'm going to take the second best player in the conference. Give me Steph Curry. Okay. Mm. It's very easy. Nice. easy pick. Very easy. Only natural. Only natural. Okay. So Jokic off the board and Steph is off the board. That just leaves me with Luka Doncic. Mm -hmm. And on top of Luka, let me go ahead and... You compare him with a lot of interesting guys. So let's see what you I know. This. I have so many interesting options. But one thing that I notice is like, yo, the... <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I almost fumbled. Give me AD. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, you, got the best, you got maybe the best pick and roll ball handler in the league. Maybe the best pick and roll finisher. It's a good start. Yeah. Let's see if you fumble it. All right. Listen, we're just going to build. You know how I like to do. I like to build teams that were already great. Give me Kevin Durant. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I know this works. I know this is a successful combination. You know what? Give me his teammate that's better than him, Devin Booker. Woo! It's a hot take. Okay. I like it. I like it. That's I like spicy. It. That's spicy. <laughs> Damn, okay. Devin Booker's gone. That's sick. You got Robin. Give me Batman. Oh, it's my turn still. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is so anticlimactic. I do. Uh, 
<laughs> That's why I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm going to leave it in there without me saying I'm just kidding on the TikTok just to get people mad at me for picking Booker. <laughs> That's funny. I wasn't even going to pick Booker. I did that shit for the moment. I don't even know where I'm at now. Uh, After that, give me... Look, give me Kawhi Leonard. Damn. Okay. Listen, we're in the third round of this, and this is insane value. Give me LeBron James. Oh, shit. Oh. I forgot about LeBron. <laughs> Fumble. LeBron. What are we doing here? Fumble. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm over here picking Devin Booker as a joke, and I forgot about LeBron. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you fumbled. Okay. Okay, cool. Damn, my headphones sound weird for some reason. Um... Anyways, go ahead. I got Anthony Davis and Luka Doncic. Go ahead and give me Damian Lillard. My offense is OP as fuck. Defense and then, non-existent. Hey. He got AD. He got AD. He can do something. Relax. AD at the five. <laughs> give me Jaron Jackson Jr. at the four. Now let's move mm, on. <laughs> ah, shit. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> you stole my pick. You stole my pick. Let's okay. go. Okay. <laughs> I take it back. I spoke too soon. <laughs> Hmm. Let me think. Let me think. Damn. <laughs> I know that that was that was that was gonna be my next pick. I'm really struggling right now. Actually, I'm not struggling. All right. Isaac took Kawhi. We're gonna take his running mate. Give me Paul George. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> <sighs> okay, fuck. Who do I wanna go with here? Losing Jaron and A D for the four really sucks. Alright, I got a stretch five. Give me Zion Williamson to pair with him for the inside threat. And then on my point guard, um, ooh, I can go a couple ways with this. De'Aaron Fox is right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take the better Cameron De'Aaron Payne? Fox. Give me John Morant. Okay. 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 That's nice. That's nice. Spacing is... All but right. I digress. All right, guys. <laughs> I think I'm about to make history in this pod. Make history. Okay. I'm going to do something. <laughs> You're not going to do it. You're I'm, not going to do it. And you guys exact, You guys know exactly where I'm going to go. No. Give me Rudy Gobert at my five. Oh, my God. I need a, a legitimate center. And he was the only one that I felt comfortable wow. with his defense. His defense is going to be valuable for me. I had to do it. Listen. I Top tier it. character development. I had to do it. <laughs> I ha- I'm tired of fumbling drafts. I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm not doing it this time. I, I'm picky. I choose me. I choose me. <laughs> Listen, fair uh, enough. Counterpoint. Any team that has Rudy Gobert defending Jokic is guaranteed to lose, so you might have folded. Any no. team <laughs> any team no, that has no. to guard Jokic is pretty much guaranteed to lose these days, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's cooked regardless. Um, <laughs> damn. Okay. Guess to finish this up, Give me Anthony Edwards at my three. Okay. So I, I'm happy. I'm happy. I did what I was supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're four and you're five. We're going to be defending their asses off, keeping up for everybody else, but it's a good team. For sure. So I got Luke at my one, or Dame at my one, Luke at my two, Ant at my three, Triple J at my four, and Anthony Davis at my five. I got hell in That JJJ AD combination is nice. Your, your front yeah. court's disgusting. My it's front, disgusting. my front and my back court disgusting. You can't guard me, bro. And then I got Anthony <laughs> Edwards on the sideline. <laughs> team is right. unbeatable. My team, my team sucks. Right. I got caught up picking Booker as a, for a bit, and then my team sucks. <laughs> John Morant, Devin Booker, Kawhi Leonard, Zion Williamson, Jokic. You hear that? Whole lot of Listen, ass. You got Jokic Woo. though. You got Jokic though. Yeah. No, my team is great. Like it's fantastic players. It's just weird. <laughs> Can't fuck with me, though. <laughs> I have Steph Curry, Paul George. Well, your team is worse, by the way. Kevin Don't Durant, what? LeBron, You're hype. and Rudy Gobert. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what? what? Yeah, nah. you, you, you got hype for no reason. No, nah, my team is yeah, not I mean, your Jokic's trigger. better than AD. Zion's better than JJJ. Kawhi's better than Ant. Zion don't play. Booker's better Kawhi than Dame. Kawhi don't play. <laughs> Booker is... Okay. Booker, saying Booker is better than Dame, that's a, that's a serious conversation that we have to have. Yeah, anyways, I was just talking. <laughs> that one, I'd, yeah. probably, I'd probably pick Dame. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just rattle them off, see if you notice. <laughs> uh, All right, man. We love it. Next love one it. we got, we're going to do a... We're going to do something topical because, you know, the NFL is coming back this week. We're going to tie that into the NBA in our own way. And we're going to talk about which NBA players would be better as football players. Oh, I'm ready. I'm yep. ready. Who you, you know, got? 
they be saying certain stars just do halfback dive every play. So we're going to put that to the test. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. So which NBA players would be better in the NFL? Let me say it again. <clears throat> which NBA player would be better in the NFL? Steph Curry or LeBron James? See, I want to say Steph because his like hand-eye coordination is crazy. You could kind of just put him anywhere. But LeBron James is like... Actually just, a football player. He's a freak. Point. That's what I'm saying. He's actually <laughs> a football player. He would just be a more athletic Rob Gronkowski. I'm taking LeBron <laughs> in every single sport. LeBron could be playing cricket and I would take him. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's him. I don't know. I feel, yeah. like, I feel like Steph could throw a football through a hoop from like 100 yards away though. I feel See, like he would just be deadly accurate. When I, when I imagine Steph Curry as a football player, I just see Patrick Mahomes, bro. Just that light skin effect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the resemblance is uncanny. <laughs> but I'm still taking LeBron, though. He's a freak. Yeah. yeah well, shit. You, might, you put LeBron on the edge, give, put his hand in the dirt, he might, he might be Khalil Mack. I don't know. <laughs> put him anywhere. He's straight. <laughs> uh, next up, Zion Williamson versus Ja Morant. Zion, oh, Listen, I think it might be Zion. Zion Williamson might, Zion might be Aaron Donald, but John Morant might be a nasty corner. I was literally going to say the exact thing, bro. His corner, <laughs> his corner game would be insane. You throw a jump corner ball with John Morant, point. he's swatting it every time. Oh, yeah. He's, listen, he's just Sauce Gardner with dreads. Like, that's it. <laughs> Sauce Gardner with dreads. <laughs> uh. But do I want to take John? Nah, it's, Zion's just too big. Zion, I know, I know Zion. Growing up, he grew up in South Carolina. He walked around everywhere, and they're like, "You play ball, don't you? You, you play ball, don't you?" He has, he has football uh, body. Every, facts, every exactly. time he walked down the hall in the, in the eighth grade, every football coach was like, "Here, son, let me talk." <laughs> I've seen that story a thousand times. <laughs> that man uh, is Ray Lewis. <laughs> uh, uh, next up. Lamelo Ball versus Anthony Edwards. Oh, Anthony Edwards! <laughs> it's, it's Anthony Edwards. L- Lamelo was like carefully crafted by Levar to be a basketball player. He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't have the football stuff in it. I trust Anthony Edwards to be successful at anything he does. No, for Bro. sure. They they made Lamelo Ball in a lab with all the perfect traits for a basketball player. <laughs> you put him on a football court. He's in a he, malfunction. He's lost. Bro. Slow as shit, no <laughs> explosion, no hops. He could pass, but who is he in the NFL? <laughs> Who's a weak ass quarterback in the NFL? Who's this comparison in your head? I think if you put Lamelo on a court, he'd probably look like a kicker trying to play tight end. Oh, that that's is, so that man bad. Would be Brandon Whedon, he'd be, he'd be Brock Osweiler, just yeah. tall and bad. Oh, Brock Osweiler, <laughs> yeah, just throwing out deep cuts. <laughs> no, I feel like Anthony Edwards can be a mean, strong safety. He might be Jamal Adams, low key. Yeah, he's he like got that. that shit. He got <laughs> that shit. All right, next up, Trey Young versus Chet Holmgren. They're both ass, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Listen, the only p- unless they are playing punter or kicker, they would both suck. <laughs> no, nah, I think These- I think Trey could get away with playing QB. What? He is, he's a, he is he's like quick as hell. He is light. He's too Bro. small. If Kyler, he takes a Von Miller sack, just a routine sack, he's gonna listen. snap in half. <laughs> Clavicle is broken. Like so what is open. that? What is Chet doing? What is his seven foot ass doing? Playing center, <laughs> snapping the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Playing center is just snapping. Shuffling his feet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're taking the blind side. That's a good technique. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that technique is too good, Isaac. Hold on. Oh, you did play football. No, I forget. No, Isaac, Isaac 100% played football. Yeah, he did. That's, that's muscle he memory did. for him. <laughs> oh, man. You still got that in him. Your coach, proud of you right now. <laughs> uh, no, give me Chad Holmgren. <laughs> no, that's gross. Oh, Chad Holmgren doesn't get bull rushed by Aaron Donald one time and fucking find God. <laughs> cracked yeah, ribs in half, bro. <laughs> He's gonna be converted to a different religion. <laughs> He's not walking a day in his life again. <laughs> All right, Dylan Brooks versus Kevin Durant. It's Dylan Brooks easy. This is it's a perfect Dylan sport Brooks for him, bro. 
This is what he needs to be playing. He he's not good at basketball. He needs to be playing football. Go try he something else. Put his hand that dirt. Rush exactly. that edge. <laughs> exactly. You want to go be aggressive? Go be fake tough. There's a lot of them in the NFL. You would fit right in. Bro, I, I just you imagine most will get along just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I just I mean, imagine I he'll get into the most egregious fight, slapping <laughs> the shit mind. out of helmets and shit. Yo, <laughs> so, so Nick Bosa would not like Dylan Brooks. I will tell you that right now. <laughs> what do he's you like mean by him? that? <laughs> uh. He's liking when he straightens his hair. <laughs> uh. No, I can tell Dylan Brooks. Like every time you watch him do anything athletic, you can just tell he's dying to put a shoulder in someone's chest. Oh, Give yeah. him free reign. He's out of here. Yeah, bro. Yeah. How, Perfect how football he player. He's like six six six, six seven. seven. Six 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 seven. One of those. He'd be a good tight end. I can see it. <laughs> tight end. He's, he's on George. defense. I mean, he would listen, sell calls so many times. Blocking only. He's not. He's not a star. Nah, he's not a true. pass catcher. Mm. I don't know. He might be George Kittle, Loki. No, nah, he don't got that <laughs> kind of finesse. <laughs> George Kittle, would kill him. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he'd pancake him. All right. Next up, <laughs> in this picture, <laughs> that I never noticed that chain, that DB chain. He's kind of cooking. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Yeah, that is cool. All right. Next up, we have Jimmy Butler versus Draymond Green. This is hard as hell. <laughs> this is but, not Draymond. I'm taking Jimmy Butler. I've seen the tape. I've seen Draymond's Draymond's highlight tape from Michigan State when he tried out. He didn't know bro. what he was doing. Listen, what? Have you seen it? Have you seen his violence tape? Yes. Yeah. He, he has the eye of the tiger. He will fuck somebody <laughs> up on a football field. Put put shoulder and pads on. Can somebody please bring up the tape? Some <laughs> well, I've seen the evidence. We have <laughs> we have it. You it's are not, asleep. It's not him. He was a kid back then, bro. Put this version of Draymond in the NFL. He yeah, might be, man strength Draymond. Yeah, yeah. He might be all pro. He might be all pro. He no, no I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Jimmy Butler would be a heat-seeking free safety. He would be Troy Polamalu. <laughs> bro, this picture of Draymond. Troy Polamalu. <laughs> look, look at Draymond. Look at this. Look at this. this <laughs> he don't is, look right. This he don't look what, like he belongs exactly there. This is exactly what Isaac was talking about earlier. This is the kid who walked who walked in the hallway in eighth grade <laughs> and the coach said, come here, son. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. <laughs> no, oh, he man. does not belong here. <laughs> no, he, he, he doesn't have the, the football player build the athleticism needed to be on the NFL field. That is true. He ain't got you an ounce Jimmy of Butler, quickness. You get Jimmy Butler six weeks, he's going to come out looking like Patrick Willis. I guarantee it. Uh, dude, he, he's black Luke Heakley, dude. Are you kidding me? That's what I imagine him <laughs> as. God. <laughs> Yeah, he has the great determination. He'll put on 25 pounds and be out there playing middle read zone. <laughs> be killing it. <laughs> Let him man the middle of the field in the cover three. He's we're good. <laughs> this guy Isaac's been playing Madden. Look at all Facts. this terminology. What the fuck is a cover three? He's in it. He's in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Jimmy Butler. Well, imagine Draymond Green in football field is so funny. Just imagine Draymond Green going head to head with Derrick Henry. Oh, he would goodness. die. <laughs> he would get his chest caved in. <laughs> <laughs> Internal bleeding. All right, that's funny. Next thing we're going to do, next video, we're going to do a tier list, and we're going to do it off of something we promised you guys this last week when we did our video where we were talking about which NBA moment is funnier. A lot of those moments were about LeBron James. So yeah. we decided today we're going to do a tier list of the funniest LeBron moments of his career. Facts. This, this is the most be comical superstar of all time. He's not a generational. Person. There hasn't the been he's, an he's NBA player. Facts. There hasn't been an NBA player who has accumulated so many memes throughout his entire career. This is only a <laughs> portion of it. Let's put the funniest moments of LeBron's career into a tier list. Okay. So first up, it's the classic LeBron lion meme. <laughs> and this one right here, he was talking about how we envision Kobe scoring 81 points before the game. <laughs> he saw it in a dream. <laughs> you know, that's a Raven vision. <gasps> <laughs> Listen, this one this one has made for for not being around for a long time, this one made just skyrocketed up. I, I honestly yeah. have to put this at like at least A. This is hilarious. Yeah, this can go A tier. This meme came out. It was a late bloomer. Like 10 years after it happened, everyone found it and realized this motherfucker be lying a lot. <laughs> and like now it's a whole new part of his personality that we're never going to look past. It's got to be A tier. Facts. Yeah, it's, he's it's, just a- it's funny. It's just an extension because, you know, you know where this started? It started because everyone was like, 
Oh, look at the books that LeBron's reading <laughs> before before games. Yeah. And he's always on the first page. It didn't matter if it was game one or game seven of the same series. He was still on page one. He was not reading them books. No, yeah. that man has met that man has read the foreword of the autobiography of Malcolm X a thousand times. Facts, dude. <laughs> Never hit chapter one. <laughs> Facts, dude. Straight up liar, man, all the time. I think shortly after this moment, a couple years, maybe a couple years after this moment, he went ahead, went to a Steph Curry game, and he said, obviously, a couple years after Steph became an All Star, that yo, I seen it since day one. I went to go watch him play in person. <laughs> I knew he was the one. He just straight up lies all the time. <laughs> Not really. A tier, a for sure. What's all right, next? next up, we got the infamous. 2018 Ooh. NBA Finals meme, bro, where J.R. Smith wow. just lost track of time and LeBron was like, these didn't know what to do with his hands. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen an easier S tier. Put it on the board. Not even 100%. worth the debate. One of the greatest NBA memes of all time. By far the funniest meme of LeBron's career. This will Ooh. stand the gener- This will stand the test of time and be a generational meme easily. Look at the disgust on his face. It's I so don't... many feelings in his oh face. Oh my goodness. It's not only disgust, <laughs> it's confusion. It's fear. He's furious as hell. He wants to put <laughs> hands on J.R. Smith, and also he's sad too. LeBron it's just the put most a natural. Points. LeBron just put a fifty points against the greatest team ever assembled to no avail, <laughs> and J.R. Smith messed up the way he did. He he wanted to leave the Cleveland Cavaliers that night. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, LeBron is the most media trained man alive. Pure professionalism holds his emotions back in so, certain times. Not tonight. This time, this is the most raw we've ever seen LeBron James. We've never seen anybody be more real for a split second in the history of mankind. God, man. <laughs> this was crazy. S tier. Easily, bro. <laughs> this, is, so, this is a generational meme, too, which plays part in this tier list. Yeah, it's very, very versatile. You can definitely use it for a lot of good jokes. Ooh. <laughs> Next up, we got Lance Stevenson blowing into LeBron's ear. <laughs> oh, man. These, I feel like these are all S tier. These are incredible moments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to put this at a B. I love this moment. It's hilarious. But it's something happening to LeBron, not LeBron doing True. something. So in the grand scheme of things, I'll drop it. I feel like it's got to be A. This is the funniest moments of his career. This is hysterical. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Anything involving Lance Stevenson automatically gets a tear jump because he's the funniest man of all time. Like, how could this be anything lower than an A? <laughs> I don't that know. It's crazy. He blew in a grown man's ear <laughs> during, a, yeah. during a playoff game. In like, a playoff on, game at that, too. <laughs> like, he's trying everything in his heart to get this man off of his game. And the best thing he could have come up with is blowing in his ear. <laughs> That's <laughs> mad uncomfortable, dude. Are you kidding me? It might have to be an S. We can't put S in everything, though. <laughs> a? Uh, I don't know. Meet him in yeah, the middle, we'll go A? We'll go, we'll go A. a. Okay, cool. Post game of the 2018 NBA Finals, Le- LeBron's walk off. Oh, wait, I don't even remember this one. Why did he walk off again? Because someone asked him a stupid ass question about J.R. <laughs> Smith fumbling the game. This is after his 50 point performance. He, he he pulled up in a suit. Remember when they all wore all gray suits? He had Jordan oh, Clarkson yeah. on the Warriors <laughs> all up, and they were serious business. Dude had yeah. a little case in him. He probably has toothbrush and a deodorant in it. He doing all that for what reason? I don't know. But he just walked off and it, was, and it looked just like OD serious. I think the fact that they all wore suits makes this moment funny because, <laughs> because he was so mad at the Cavs. They never wore those suits again. He, he never gave anybody another suit. He was like, I'm done. I'm done. We're not friends anymore. Yeah, no, he was trying yeah, to build he, a he pulled that out of his rotation of team building tactics. He's like, that one is bad juju. Never again. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'll give that a good I'll give that a good C. It's a decent moment. Yeah. Yeah. I think this definitely is a C tier. It's Great more moment. of an extension of, of the um of the, the J.R. Smith meme. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. We got LeBron James IG story this past season of him doodling Bart Bart Simpson. <laughs> Ooh, this is a good one. <laughs> oh man. Bart got a big ass head though. <laughs> my bad, Bart. <laughs> he said just tooling around, miss doing this all the time. Used to be my escape. <laughs> God, right. Bro, yeah, no. Nah, this is so this odd. Ass drawing. <laughs> no, but let's be real, it's not that bad. No, it's not bad. It, it's it's not just bad. why? For somebody you know? who doesn't draw like that, yeah. it's not that it's not that bad. Bro, he made Bart look like Frankenstein. Are you kidding? It's just funny because it's LeBron. It's like 
why are you doing this? Like, yeah. like, like yes. do you want us to compliment you on your drawing skills and be like, oh, you're so talented. Like, bro, relax. Yeah. Like, it was just, <laughs> it was just so jarring. Much. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay. You don't expect to see this from one of the greatest players of all time story. It's like, shit, okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. Wait, talking about, talking about, talking about, is Bart wearing off-white shorts? <laughs> oh, my God. He oh, drew, okay. Bro. No. LeBron, These were off white socks too. He made Bart Simpson a hype beast. Like, come on, LeBron. <laughs> come on. I didn't even no. notice that. Wow. This is like those pictures people used to have on their phone screensavers in like 2007 of SpongeBob yeah. and like the mafia gear. Oh, shit. SpongeBob and Supreme. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, what is that chain? Bart Simpson is wearing a LeBron chain. He. Okay. Oh, <laughs> this, it's, this it's is just chain? off the rails. This is just it looks like a, a ridiculous drawing. It looks like a dog uh, collar. It's like I didn't that even picture that. of Fred Flintstone where it says, I know what I got a yabba dabba do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I would give this a good B. This is hilarious. This is I pretty good. This is pretty good, LeBron. We could do B. Oh, this is B. This I'll is funny as shit. I'll go B. This is ridiculous. <laughs> All right, I'll go B. B. Listen, with a LeBron chain, am I have to be A? <laughs> 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 this is nonsense. Uh, All right, what's next? <laughs> we got LeBron's Ooh. classic singing to songs that he doesn't know the lyrics of. Yeah, but I have a do all day. <laughs> <laughs> and there's multiple times. There's like five songs which he did this to, bro. <laughs> the old Navy has to be A tier. This is incredible. This is uh, incredible. What was the original song on this? Does anybody know? It was some Roddy Rodway song. What was he song, trying to sing? I forget. Because I, I think, think knowing Rodway the song, actual song maybe. would make it funnier. No, this is before Rod Wave started popping. What was it? It's not the first day out one. What was he saying? Um, I don't know. Oh, Black. yeah. It was the, the Six Lack song. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. You're right. You're right. You're he's right, singing along yeah. the Six Lack on IG? That's like... <laughs> <laughs> the sunglasses yeah, on, sipping on wine? God, bro. <laughs> no, this is great. He just be making shit uh, up because he's LeBron and he doesn't have the obligation of knowing the words because people are going to fuck with it regardless. So he can <laughs> say whatever he wants. This man is washed. So is this A <laughs> the or King B? for real. This is A for sure. It's A. <laughs> old Navy. <laughs> yeah, but what the fuck dude, is he old, talking old about? <laughs> dude, he's drunk <laughs> off that wine, honestly. Facts. Just talking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just making noises. Yeah. Man. All right. Oh, this is classic. <laughs> this is this is the infamous 2017 NBA Finals loss after the Golden State Warriors. He lost his mind. Went ahead and started. Bop- he was who was bopping who? Tory Lanes. No, it was T Grizzly. It was no, first day you're out. right. It was T Grizzly. You're right. It was T Grizzly. T Grizzly. Personally, I think this is S tier. I think this is hilarious. I think this was one of LeBron's like funniest moments of all time. On top of just losing the finals, coming out with the bald head. Yeah, the bald is what makes it funny. <laughs> yeah. Hit the Rolly store with the Rolly on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the arm movement is what makes it funny. Yeah. <laughs> he thought he was raw as shit. I don't know he why. Thought, oh, wait, I'm, I'm gonna come up bald. I'm making the goat transformation. Everybody been telling me to do it. <laughs> First day out is popping. <laughs> this is equivalent to a white girl crisis of them just changing their hair color, bro. Like just oh, completely cutting the hair after you get your ass whooped in the finals. He had to do all that now. <laughs> no, I'm gonna give this an A because he thinks he's so much cooler than he actually looks that it's pure hysterical. It's got to be raw. <laughs> he for sure was in the mirror after he went. Bald, he's like, Man, I'm not playing fair this year. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm, I'm moving different this time. Uh, <laughs> Hit the rolling stone with the rolling on. <laughs> yeah, but that was the most aggressive Check lyrics I've ever, I've ever heard anybody <laughs> fucking say, too. <laughs> so funny. Uh, bro. <laughs> That's the only part he enunciated was Hit the rolling stone with the rolling on. <laughs> After that, he started mumbling. <laughs> yeah. Get away. Check the fucking uh, He used all the strength of his lungs to say them lyrics. lyrics. <laughs> uh, yeah, A tier for sure. All right, let's put this A for sure. I agree. I agree. All right, next video we're gonna do, we're gonna bring it back, do another draft, but this time we're gonna do a player draft. You know, we did this before plenty of times now, where instead of drafting players, we draft traits to build a player, which include body, defense, shooting, passing, and finishing. This time we're gonna build a, a voice crack. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like burping. <laughs> Let's go. This time we're going to build the perfect center with only retired players. Let's we did that with the point guard last time, so be fun. This so, time we're doing centers? Uh, big men. Yeah. Cool. It could be man. power forward or center. Yeah, we'll say big men. Love it. Let's build the perfect NBA big men with only retired players. Uh, I got so I got first pick, Donovan second, Mo third. Damn. Okay. Okay. So only retired players. First pick, give me Shaq's body. Okay. Keep, you know, 
Give me the frame, the big diesel. Cheat code. Okay. That's yep. fine. That's fine. All right. For body. I see no, not even for body. Give me Hakeem Olajuwon's defense. Okay. okay. Nice. I have a feeling you'll do that. You know how I so feel for, about, about Dream. Cool. <laughs> so for shooting, give me Dirk. Ah, oh, I should have thought of that. Yeah. And then for defense, give me Kevin Garnett. It's a great pick. That's disgusting. Player is insane. That's disgusting. All right. For for passing, I have to get the man, the myth, the legend, Arvita Sabonis. I wanted yep. to go him too. I wanted to go him too. I like it. Okay. Um I feel like I gotta get passing now before all the good ones go. Give me a Mark Gasol passing. Okay. Damn. Solid. Okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> that was my pick, but whatever. I'll let that slide. <laughs> And then, hmm, this bar can go a lot of ways. Defense, finishing, passing. Do we, are we counting post moves as finishing? I think so. Probably. Oh yeah. well, I wish I would have known that before. I would have taken. <laughs> okay, it, it doesn't fucking nah. matter. I mean, what uh, like where else do post moves go? Am I allowed to to? No, you're trade? not. I was not aware of this prior. Where I else do post moves go? So many times. <laughs> It's okay. I see how it is. I see how we're moving. I see how we're moving. It's okay. Keep going. Right. Keep going. Give me the best finisher big man of all time. The sky hook, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Now, this is whack. I've been robbed. Unstoppable finishing move. I have been robbed. <laughs> Pain. I don't like and, this. Oh, oh, yeah. I went twice. Your turn. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Um. All right. Let's see. Defense, defense. Actually, let's see. So, I have Hakeem's defense already. Give me... Give me David Robinson's body. Very athletic guy. Yeah, that's a good pick. One of the fastest <sighs> big men out there. Okay. Donovan not going to like this, but give me Wilt's body. Okay. That's a great pick. <laughs> and then, so I need finishing and I also need passing now. So for for passing, go ahead. Damn, bro. Go ahead and uh give me... <laughs> Uh, Pau Gasol passing. Okay. I feel like I've done that before. Yeah, you've definitely picked Pau Gasol passing several <laughs> times. <laughs> I've done that before. Yeah. All right. For finishing, I'm going to just get somebody that's just stupid athletic. Give me Dwight Howard's finishing. That's a good pick. No touch. Most dunks in NBA history. Yeah, no touch at all. Yeah, no touch. It is okay. I put one tall guy in front of you, you're going to be backboard. It's, a, it's okay. <laughs> I'm making the greatest rim runner of all time. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you know, that's fine. Give me the perfect defender to shut that shit down. Give me Tim Duncan. I can't believe Tim fell this far, bro. I can't me believe either. Tim fell this far. I'll take it. Wow. <laughs> and then, hmm. Shooting, where do I want to go? There's a lot of guys who could shoot middies really well back in the day, but weren't really. You know what? Give me, for shooting, give me one of the. Oh, <laughs> how do I phrase this? <laughs> Give me one of the best stretch bigs that could do nothing else besides stretch. Give me Channing Fry. Weak. <laughs> nothing else Weak. besides stretch is crazy. <laughs> Listen, all, all I need that part of my player to do is strap it from three and we're good. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> That's, That's a sentence right there. That's a sentence right there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> exactly. Who you got? You know what? I'm gonna just double down. I'm look. I'm I'm not gonna have a three point shot, but give me the most unstoppable turnaround midi. Give me Lamarcus Aldridge's shooting. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. I love that shit. That's a weapon. That's I a weapon miss Lamarcus, sure. man. Damn. All right. So to finish this off, all I have is finishing left. Yep. Give me Patrick Ewing finishing. Okay. It's okay. not bad. It's not bag bad. Bag is nice. It's not bad. Bag is nice. Not bad at all. No, not, not a bad, bad choice by any means. Yeah. So for shooting, I got Dirk. For defense, I got KG. For body, I got Wilt. Passing, I got Powell. And finishing, I got Patrick Ewing. Mm. If there would have been somebody a little more impressive in that finishing, you might have got it. Yeah. Still a solid big man, though. I think I think guys that got it, though. I body, you got Shaq. Weird. Body, you got Shaq, the best one. Defense, you got Tim Duncan, the best one. Finishing, you got Kareem, the best one. <laughs> Passing on Marcus Hall and shooting at Channing Fry. Shooting Channing, <laughs> Ch saying Channing Fry's name, <laughs> like it just feels like so jarring. Take out all the attributes. Like, what does he do on this list? Why is he in this list? Shoot, <laughs> he's, he's, he's there. He got range. He got it. He got it. 
right. I have David Robinson's body, Hakeem Olajuwon's defense, LaMarcus Aldridge's shooting, Arvita Sabonis passing, and Dwight Howard finishing. Listen, I don't have a I don't have a jump hook and I don't have a three, but everything <laughs> else I'm I'm really nice, right? Listen, I'm good what I'm good at. Okay, yeah. I know I know where my skills are at. <laughs> it's not bad. Uh, so get you a smart coach. I know how to deploy you wisely. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what this is? Who is this? This is, this is just 2020 AD. <laughs> That's it. This is, this is AD. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for. It. I'm like, I feel like I know that player, but I don't, I can't put my finger on it. It is AD. <laughs> it's like I know that player. That's funny. All right, one more video we got. We're gonna do something we did a while ago. We're gonna say, did this NBA player live up to the draft comparison? So I, I dove deep into the internet streets. Me too. They're hilarious. Most of these are from the Ringer, from their draft guides over the years. So, yeah, I, I won't even say anything else. We'll just jump into it. Y'all know what's up. Did this NBA player live up to their pre-draft comparison? First off, Kristaps Porzingis being bouncy Dirk. I mean, obviously not. <laughs> obviously not. This man was shipped out of New York within, what, four or five years? No. No, he was not like that. He was not the cornerstone of a franchise that we thought he was going to be. The unicorn was supposed to save the garden. You sound he like there's a, sounds this like sounds like there's a little bit of heart hate in your heart. Oh, of course, say, sure is. Of course injuries bro, I have a video. Of that Isaac was there the day he was traded. I'm going to include this. I have a video on my phone of Donovan I think in his dorm room bed. He was in his dorm room bed. Just distraught that they traded Chris <laughs> Osborne and Giz. I'm gonna put that in the video right now. He was no. <laughs> Listen, I had we had just we had just skipped class, went to Canes, and I told Isaac on the walk over there that if the Knicks trade Chris Porzingis, I'm burning down Madison Square Garden. <laughs> <laughs> all for Dennis Smith. All for Dennis Smith Jr. Damn, you were down bad that day. That <laughs> that year. <laughs> that year. Uh, Listen, that's I'm really not convinced disgusting. he's recovered yet, honestly. Yeah. It's kind of fair. Some wounds never heal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next up, Donovan Mitchell to Norm Powell mixed with Gary Harris. He's easily Norm Powell and that. Gary Harris is insane. <laughs> that is disgusting. Who is that? <laughs> what was the vision? Exactly. Yeah. Terrence Mann. I don't even what know. What was he cooking? What <laughs> the fuck? Norm Powell. Bro, this man Donovan Mitchell was barely a lottery pick. He so far exceeded all expectations. That's crazy. Yeah, facts, dude. It was in his rookie season, it came to a point to where people were comparing him to D. Wade and Russell Westbrook, bro. <laughs> crazy. He was like that. He was like that. Nobody thought Blue he'd be that. one of the most dynamic finishers, off the dribble shooters, you know, on ball creators. It's, yeah. That's what he is now. <laughs> Norm Powell with Gary Harris. What a departure. Yeah, exactly. He was a he was a lottery pick at the back end of it. So I mean not that bad of a comparison, but is Norm Powell and Gary Harris combination even like a high level starter? Norm Powell used to be or I Gary mean, Harris used to be so good. So let's not forget. <laughs> listen, that. It, yeah, prime Norm Powell and prime Gary Harris. Like if you prime take, Gary Harris. <laughs> if you take them good. at their peaks. And if you take and if you take Gary Harris for those fifty five games where he was lighting it up, <laughs> you locking have people something. down too, you Let's have talk something. About it. No, I, when we were doing player rankings, I was like, "Is Gary Harris the fortieth best player in the league in 2017?" I, I was all hype on him. <laughs> oh my goodness, bro! Top those are 50 disgusting. To Gary Harris, yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> all right, oh, next man. one: Darius Garland to Damian Lillard. Oh uh, um, man, it's kind of unfair. S- it's yeah. it's it's unfair to compare somebody to Damian Lillard because he's that good. So I guess I guess he he technically failed because he's not as good as Dame, but Darius Garland is still really freaking good. So like we'll give him a pass for not living up to that comparison. Yeah, it's yeah, comparisons. A, it's all supposed to be unfair. I, I would <laughs> compare to just how it is in general. Sure, he's in the same vein, I guess as you can say as Dame. He has a long yeah. range shooting. He's a better facilitator from what I see. Uh, he's an engine offensively, so I think he passes. He's not Dame. Yeah, he's he an all-star level guard who's a dynamic off the dribble shooter and creator for others. I, I think he's been what you want him to be coming to the draft. Yeah, facts. Maximizes potential. We can say that confidently. Yeah, honestly, he's he's getting really underrated since D. Mitch got all the shine last year. Yeah, Darius Garland's one of the most promising young guards in the league. Facts. Okay. Okay, I can live with that. All right, next one. Too much positivity. Marvin Bagley <laughs> to Amari Stoudemire and Michael Beasley. 
Hey man, I'm putting this Amari. mic down. <laughs> <laughs> no, Amari Stoudemire that man and failed. Michael Beasley. That is a crazy combination to imagine. Amari Stoudemire. I mean, he's built like Michael Beasley. He's wiry. He's so just why left. He's, he's just a lefty. That's it. <laughs> he's a lefty he's with just, the slightest bit of handle. That's all that's it is, it. dude. <laughs> he's, he's like 6'9", 6'10", and he's a lefty. So you're just going to be called Michael Beasley. <laughs> Ah oh, man, yeah. that was so gross. He can't shoot like Michael Beasley. Can't get to the rim like Michael Beasley. He can't jump like Amari Stoudemire. Can't block shots like Amari Stoudemire. Uh, he's not he's as cool. Sh- he's not as cool as Michael Beasley. He's not yeah. like. So what does he do? <laughs> he rides the bench. That's what he does. <laughs> no, uh, he man. failed. Injuries hurt Come him. He was here. drafted to ass team. He wasn't supposed to be drafted that high, but folks are overrating the hell out of him. It's not his yeah. fault. Yeah, he was doomed by being picked number two over Luca. He was never going to have a successful career after Bro, that. It folks are calling him. him the next AD. It was disgusting. Next AD and Chris Bosch. It was gross out there. No, well, college I mean, Marvin Bagley was a phenom. That man was a legend. <laughs> high school Marvin Bagley? You, you could, bro, <laughs> you heard Wilt type stories, bro. He was different back then. <laughs> Most of the things he's that. Mo Mo ranked Marvin Bagley in his top thirty. Oh no, no, no. Go back to twenty eighteen. My my videos are still up on the board. I did not want that man on my team. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You still I think he's nice on, though? I mean, you, are did you, you see my power that? forward ranking video? You tell me. <laughs> I can't believe you put him in your top thirty. That was so nasty. <laughs> That's the single worst placement on any of our lists. <laughs> uh, Marvin Bagley no, 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 no. Ch- no, no, no. Chet Holgram has to be worse than that, bro. I refuse. <laughs> He didn't even play a game. Or, uh, he just put some drip Isaiah on and that's it. <laughs> you said what? <laughs> it might be Isaiah Thomas at 12 all time. Oh, yeah. Two-time champion is terrible. Let's let's keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm dead. Overwilt. Also two-time <laughs> champion. Next one we got. Stats merchant. <laughs> <laughs> Next one is Trey Young to Mike Bibby and Trey Burke. Mike Bibby. I now, mean, I don't, I don't think that he can like facilitate a team the way that Mike Bibby can. And he really doesn't get as hot as Trey Burke can, so I don't think that he's. I don't think that he's lived up to this. If we're being, have real. you seen Mike Bibby lately? He's so much more swole than Trey Young. It just puts him on a whole other level. Trey Young will never have that type of muscle. <laughs> have y'all seen, bro? M- Trey Burke back when he was in New York. What was the year? Twenty seventeen. You remember that? You remember them days? Look like AI, bro. Exactly. He he like those expectations. That. <laughs> yeah, Trey Young can't compare, honestly. Let's Trey Young will never look like Allen Iverson. <laughs> <laughs> he can't. He can't. He will get never like have the ability. He, have the he will never him. have exactly. He will never have the ability <laughs> to get cornrows. Trey Burke can. <laughs> He'll never play in the 2011 Heat. It's just not going to happen for him. He failed. Exactly. So, I mean, if we're going by that standard, Trey Burke is closer to Allen Iverson than Trey Young. <laughs> I will stone you guys the next time you see me. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of pillage our homes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, sh- nah sh- shout out Trey. He doing good. Crazy. <laughs> okay, next one. <laughs> Devin Booker to Clay Thompson. Surpassed. I think a lot. I remember back in 2016, 2017, people try to imagine what Clay Thompson would look like if he had his own team. It's literally Devin Booker. But Clay doesn't Think have so? that back to him. Absolutely. Yeah. So obviously Devin Booker lived up to this. He's better than Clay right now after Clay's injuries. Is Booker right now better than Prime Clay? Yes. Ye- Ooh. It's hard Booker's to say. Pushing, Booker's pushing top ten player in the league status. Like, yeah. Was the defense has improved. That? Yeah. The defense. Hell no. Top ten? Nah. <laughs> top twenty fifteen guaranteed. But ten? Who the hell? God Ooh. no. No, he was never. It's hard because Clay's prime. Clay is like incredibly valuable to any winning team, but Booker's so much. Ca- but Booker's capable of carrying so much more of a load. So I don't yeah, know. he's way more dynamic, and of course the defense is valuable for Clay. He's Iron Man literally. But you have supreme supreme scoring on all three levels. You got he's an underrated facilitator in my opinion, and then on top of that, his defense has improved drastically over the years. Give me Devin Booker. He has I no mean, issue but being if you the gave point. Clay, if you gave Prime Clay his own team, he's probably he's probably looking somewhere close to like Reggie Miller. Yeah, and I think you know, like, is, and Devin Booker now is probably better than Reggie Miller. What do you think? Yes, it's it's comparable as an argument. Have we ever seen Clay I Thompson think, in, but, in but phony Reggie Miller with MVP defense, conversations though. before? <laughs> but like. But but think about that. Reggie Miller with defense, and that's what 
and that's what Clay Thompson would have been. So I I'll mm-hmm. say yes. Like, listen, Devin Booker is like all NBA. He's he's made more all, all NBAs. He's like surpassed this expectation. But in terms of prime for prime, who's more valuable? That's definitely a conversation we can have. For sure. It's hard. That's a hard one. We'll Come for another day. But yeah, Devin Booker definitely lived up to it. Next one. <laughs> James Wiseman to being high energy Hassan Whiteside. Hassan Whiteside. And what's crazy about that? Is that he failed because he has low energy. <laughs> he has no energy. He's low energy Hassan Whiteside. And I, I don't think that there's anybody who could have had lower energy than Hassan Whiteside. <laughs> but he, he managed to do it. He defied Bro. all odds. <laughs> Generation. Low energy Hassan Whiteside. What do you even do at that point? He's what a powder. What player are you? <laughs> He's a generational powder. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, man. man. If only they would have picked Lamelo. Pain. <laughs> Pain for our Warriors <laughs> fans. Oh God! I just when I think of Hassan Whiteside, I was just thinking about the mirror meme where he's just running around the heat locker room. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, man, he could, James, James Wiseman could even provide us that. with memes, bro. Like, what do you do? You just provided all fans <laughs> with disappointment. And what ifs? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pistons fans already hate the guy. They've already turned on him. They're like, stop giving him Jalen Duran's minutes. Yeah, it's, it's, as, as he's, he's cooked. He's cooked, as he's cooked as hell. All right, last one. Tyler Hero to Devin Booker and CJ Miles. CJ Miles <laughs> used to be a bucket. Oh, my God. <laughs> he used to be different, bro. I fell in love with his game. Real hoops right there. Nah, I hoop with his silver card in my team a lot. He was he was a shooter. <laughs> he was deadly. Man, I used to get him for the vet minimum minimum back when I used to play my league in 2K14. Steal. Ah. <laughs> Listen, Tyler Hero is somewhere between CJ Miles and Devin Booker. He's in he's in that wide range. That's a wide range, but I think this is the perfect comparison. I couldn't hear anything better than this. Yeah, you get all of Devin Booker's skills and then just make them worse. And then you got Tyler Hero. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I this know. is gonna be. I don't, I don't know. The the closest thing that Tyler Hero has to Devin Booker. It's his skin color, and even then, oh my not, god! And even then, it's, it's close. his skin color. <laughs> still not close there. No. Tyler Hero looks in the mirror and definitely sees Devin Booker, though. One hundred percent, one hundred percent for sure, bro. It was right. Yeah, he does, he, he, he probably him. thinks he's darker than Devin Booker. He's like, listen, you get me in the right tan. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he sees each other on game day. And he just puts his wrist up to each other. <laughs> he's like, I, listen, I, I live in, Tyler I live in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Tyler Hero wear a do-rag board. I've seen Devin Booker wear one. It's disgusting. We've seen Tyler Hero with braids too, right? Cornrows? Yes. But he oh, needs to get shit. out. We need to get him out of Miami. He's doing too much. That Damn. man thinks he's yes, Jules. He's the NBA <laughs> Rachel Dolezal. He's the NBA Rachel <laughs> Dolezal. Uh, <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, man. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, <laughs> There's a picture for it. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, there is. This is insane. This is so accurate. Yeah. Somebody else has made this joke. <laughs> I didn't know this was the thing. I thought we were the first we ones. This. No, it was dead ass a thing. Wow. I remember this. I thought I was cooking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, that's the episode. Donovan, what should people comment? If they're still here. If if you're still here, comment. Mo, get a real exterminator. We got <laughs> we got to get these rats out your <laughs> out your crew. <laughs> Please. Can we yeah, get comment kill that rat? No, don't get, comment that. <laughs> yeah, don't say that. Don't say that. Yeah, don't say that. Yeah. Like it's a 6 9 video. <laughs> God. Can Please we get 3000 likes on this podcast, bro? Please. Please. <laughs> pretty pretty please. <laughs> we're out. He's begging you cuz he wants to get out the hood. You guys know that. <laughs> See y'all later. See y'all.